the offer, is it? You know, with the Phillies' entire franchise history, they've never been in first place on May 1st, June 1st, July 1st, and August 1st in the same season. A win tonight would guarantee that. It would also give Terry Mulholland his 10th victory. He's had six attempts at the 10th win without getting it done against Bob Tewksbury. Tewksbury, only six unintentional walks the entire season. Should be a great matchup tonight. And stay tuned with their thoughts coming up next. Jay Johnstone, Chris Wheeler at Veterans Stadium in just a moment. Darren Dalton, Madonna, Lenny Dykstra, Gina Davis, John Cruck, Rosie O'Donnell, Jim Fregosi, Tom Hanks, the Phillies, and the Peaches. The hottest teams in baseball, two teams in a league of their own, and only one channel's got them both, Prism. Whether it's at the vet or on the silver screen, it's the most exciting baseball action of the summer. From your baseball crazy friends at Prism, the only place to be for the summer of 93. The Phillies, the Pirates, it's an Eastern Division showdown live from the vet Friday night at 7.30 exclusively on Prism, the home game home of the Phillies. Everybody, welcome to Veterans Stadium. The Phillies and the Cardinals tonight, game two of this three-game series between the two teams in the National League East. They hope they win it all this year. The bullpens were really used a lot last night by both ball clubs. Uh, to the managers of these two teams, it's not only last night, but over the course of the last three or four days, both of the bullpens have been beat up, as you said, and used. Especially last night for the Cardinals manager, Joe Torre, did not want to use Lee Guterman or Omar Oliveris, but they had to use them. So tonight, the two pitchers are going to have given their teams about seven good innings for the last eight, nine games apiece. I think Terry Mulholland has gone the last ten games, giving us an average of seven innings. So that's what the managers are hoping for tonight, is both starting pitchers go at least seven innings, and that will save the bullpen for a little bit. Two guys that don't walk many batters. Terry Mulholland looking for his first win in over a month, and Greg Jeffries not in the lineup tonight for the Cardinals. We'll be back with those lineups right after this. And back here at the vet, here's your starting lineup tonight. Sherwin Williams starting lineup for the Cardinals, managed by Joe Torrey. Luis Alisea at second base. Ozzy Smith is the shortstop. Bernard Gilkey moves down to the three-hole. Todd Zeal at third base. Mark Whitten in right field. Brian Jordan will play center. Eric Pappas catches. Tracy Woodson plays first night for Greg Jeffries, who has a sore back. Tough right-hander Bob Tewksbury will do the pitching. And for the Phillies on defense, Hollins, Duncan, Morandini, and Cruck on the infield. Thompson back in left tonight, Dykstra always in center, and Eisenreich will be in right. Behind the plate, Darren Dalton on the mound. Phillies hope they give him a long, long outing. Terry Mulholland. Mulholland is 6'3", he's a 215-counter. Terry, 30 years of age, a number one pick of the Giants. In June of 1984, Mulholland at 9 and 8, but he has not won a ball game since the 19th of June when he beat Florida 5 to 2 here at the Vet. Since then, Mulholland has had two no decisions and four losses, and it's not like he's pitched all that bad. He just has pitched well enough to lose, and the Phillies haven't scored many runs for him. As we look at the umpires for the game tonight, young umpire behind the plate, Wally Bell, the crew chief, Terry Tate at first, Greg Bonan at second base, and at third base, Eric Gregg. Luis Aliseo leads it off. Gilkey, normally the leadoff man, but with Jeffries out of the lineup tonight, they move Gilkey down to the three hole for some production and moved Ali Say up to lead off. He's a switch hitter, batting 368 right handed, 293 from the left side. And Terry Mulholland starts him with ball one. Ali Say a lifetime against Mulholland, a 250 hitter, two for eight. Excellent control. Both these pitchers have tremendous control. Terry with just 28 walks in 136 innings, 82 strikeouts. We'll get the Tewksbury's numbers later. They're just amazing. So what happens? He runs a 3 0 count. <laughs> I never fail. We say it, choking up on the bat. All he wants to do is he wants to get a strike and put the bat on the ball. Batting in the leadoff spot, you got to make contact but you also have to be patient. He'll take a strike here. And that's just what it was. Strike one called by Wally Bell. Ali Saya, Smith, switch hitters. 
and then Bernard Gilkey, a right-handed batter. Hit hard and through the hole in the left field for a base hit where Thompson will get it back in. So Mulholland pays a price there of falling behind Ali Say as he gets a hit. Well, when you're down three and one on the count, you gotta throw a strike, and all Ali Say wanted to do is choking up, put the bat on the ball, and he did exactly that, hit it right on the button, and Duncan had no play as the ball scooted into left field for a hit. Ali Say has stolen three bases in three attempts, not normally a base stealer. Ozzie Smith, a great hit and run man at home plate, it has a big hole on the right side. Ozzie at 343 right handed. And he bunts it. Like he was bunting for a base hit. Ozzie, lifetime off Terry Mulholland's a 300 hitter at 9 for 30. A happy birthday tonight to Terry Dover of Wilmington and Leanne Grayson from Chester Springs. Ozzie up the middle and through for a base hit, and Ali Sayo will stop at second. So the Cardinals come out and get a couple of hits off Mulholland to begin the game. They have two on and nobody out for Bernard Gilkey. Smith in his 16th year in the big leagues. 13-time gold lover, just puts the bat on the ball, hits it right up the middle, and now Duncan, they've hit it to the right of him, to the left of him. He's got to figure out where to play this next guy. And this guy is Bernard Gilkey. Fifth in the league in doubles with 25. And a 526. 10 for 19 lifetime hitter off Mulholland. And then Zeal to follow. Jeffries normally in the three hole will not play tonight, at least in the starting role, because he has a sore back. That's why he left the game last night. Gilkey got things started last night by homering off Tommy Green. A big reason for Gilkey also being moved to that third spot is he's hit in 30 of his last 36 games. And you see what he's done against the Phillies this year. I mean, he just worn them out. Had one hit in the game last night to lead off homer. Well, and this is a little low, so Terry off to a rocky start here in the first. Two on, nobody out of the 2-0 count on Gilkey. Luis Alisea at second base, and Ozzie Smith on at first. Cardinals 5-5 five and five in their last 10, 7-8 and eight in their last 15 ball games. Way outside the high. Cardinals, because of that big ballpark in St. Louis, usually tailor their offense to speed and guys that hit line drives. Cardinals 13th in the National League in home runs. Gets a strike. Gilkey taking all the way. Gilkey's eight homers are a career high for him. Bernard grew up in St. Louis and is obviously very happy playing for the hometown club. I would think so. And usually when you got a lot of guys that hit line drives, it, make it, it makes it very tough for a pitcher because all they try and do is put the bat on the ball, keep it in play. And very patient. He draws the walk. Can't get much worse than this. Bases loaded, nobody out of the first for the cleanup man, Todd Zeal at 274, 25 doubles, 7 homers, 57 runs batted in. Maybe you see the numbers on Mulholland. Very good pitcher. He has got a lot of trouble on his hands right now. The Phillies need innings out of him tonight. Here's Zeal, he is tied with his teammate Gilkey for fifth in the league in those doubles. Both these bullpens are worn out. So the Phillies will play their infield at double play depth, would gladly give up a run to turn two. There you see the infield defense. On deck is a switch hitter, Mark Whitman. Yes, he's wearing those long sleeves again tonight, and it's even hotter here. On the inside corner for a strike, Zeal doesn't like it. Zeal and those long sleeves. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Well, a lot of guys feel very comfortable wearing the long sleeves. Remember Dick Allen, who played here for many years? You couldn't get him to take off those long sleeves. Zeal to deep left center field. This is really a lot of trouble, and it's a grand slam home run. Todd Zeal, he 
his eighth of the year, and the St. Louis Cardinals jump right out, four to nothing, with nobody out of the first on a slam by Zeal. This is not exactly how Jim Fergosi envisioned the start of this game tonight. After getting a good pitch on the inside corner to Zeal, Maha looked like he tried to come back with a slider, Chris. And he just got it out over the plate, and Zeal just crushed this one. Look how far this goes into left center field. Oh, that's way out, yeah. It sounded bad when he hit it, or good if you're a Cardinal <laughs> fan. You know, that's what happens when you get behind. Yeah, and the Cardinals are not a team that long ball you necessarily. But he got behind him, ball right out over the plate, and Zeal rocketed it out of here. And Zeal has been a hot hitter. So Johnny Padres just had a long talk with Will Holland, who can start all over. And you don't see this happen to him very often, have that kind of start. Witten takes it outside. The Phillies have a long way to come back against the Bob Tewksbury. Here is a happy Todd Zeal. RBI total now of 61. There's something's wrong with Bob You know, off and on this year, he's had a, a sore foot and a sore knee, and whenever he has that, he doesn't pitch very well. And we'll just see. That was Todd Zeal's first Major League Grand Slam. Check swing foul first base side. Well, he picked it on a good night to do it when the Cardinals really have a must-win situation here against the Phillies tonight. See Mulholland? Mulholland's doing some deep knee bends out there behind home, behind the mound right now as you look at Todd Zeal. Something is not right with him, I have a feeling. Then they come back, and 
they pitch a pretty good ball game. So hopefully that's all it is, and there's nothing really wrong with Terry Mullen. 25 pitches already. You've seen a lot of pitchers in the first inning struggle and get the control they want, the location they want. What worries me about Mulholland, though, he hardly ever struggles unless there's something physically wrong with him. Just walked into our booth, Norman Amster. Green Week reunion night here. We'll probably have some shots of some of those guys later on. Jordan keeps fouling them off and making Mulholland work hard here in the first inning. First base, Dave Hollins at third, Darren Dalton catches Jim Eisenreich at right, Mill Thompson the left fielder, Mickey Morandini at second, and the pitchers Terry Mulholland nine and eight on the year. And for the Cardinals, Tracy Woodson at first base giving injured Greg Jeffries a night off, Luis Alcea at second, Ozzy Smith at short, and Mr. Grand Slam himself, Todd Zeal at third. Bernard Gilkey in left, Brian Jordan in center, Mark Whitten in right. Behind the plate, Eric Pappas. And on the mound, Bob Tewksbury. 32-year-old veteran right-hander, a 6'4", 208-pounder from Concord, New Hampshire. Number 19 pick of the Yankees back in June of 1981. It took him to about two years ago until he finally came on the scene as a quality major league pitcher. He's given up a lot of hits, 158 hits in 134 two-third innings. But he has walked a grand total of seven batters. with three of them last night, now at 93, tied for third in the league. It hits with 120, and second and walks with 82. The Dykstra's been a leadoff machine lately. Facing Tewksbury, 1-0 against the Phils in two starts this year. You might remember Tewksbury was the pitcher that Sunday afternoon here back in May. Cruising along, they took him out of the game, and Lee Smith served up a grand slam to Mariano Duncan. And the eighth inning, Phillies had that dramatic win on Mother's Day. Jam 
Sam Duck or uh, Dykstra, and he hits a little pop up the short. Tewksbury really utilizes his pinpoint control. He doesn't throw the ball very hard. It's a fastball curve slider to change. Watch him pitch inside the Dykstra right here. Moving away, then coming right back in, just at the belt on the inside part of the plate, maybe going off it. Cut that ball, look like. Yeah. That's what he'll do. He'll cut his fastball, sink it, throw a big overhand breaking ball. Had a great year last year to Tewksbury, 16 and 5 with a 2.16 earned run average. Mariano Duncan, who has been a hot hitter since coming back, fouls it away. Duncan's hitting 371 his last seven games with eight RBIs. Tewksbury does not like that baseball, wants a new one. Tewksbury's been streaky this year. He's lost three, won four, lost three, won five, and now lost one and won one. As he beat he had a no decision against Colorado. Here comes the first baseman Woodson. Talk about that. Did he jam two hitters in a row with that stuff? That's what you're talking about. Again, it's in and out. He went away with the slider, then he came back and he ran the fist fastball in on Duncan's hands. He fouled the slider that was out over the plate, maybe a strike, and then you can see him run the fastball in above the belt. And Duncan makes it look easy. Third in the league and hitting at 351. First and walks with 83. Coming off a five-hit game last night on five different pitchers. You know how hard that is to get five hits off five different pitchers in one game as we take a look at the batting leaders of the National League? I mean, getting five hits in a game is anomaly anyway, but the thing about it is on five different pitchers. We were noticing that last night, Jay, because of all the pitchers in the game. A lot of guys were hitting off a different pitcher every time they came up. Ground ball to second. And Tewksbury's going to have a real easy first inning as Cruck rounds out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. One full inning, and it's 4 nothing Cardinals. There are lots of ways to have fun at the baseball game besides the game. Now, the game. The Phillies give Colorado a Rocky Mountain low Monday, August 23rd, and Tuesday, the 24th at 7.35, and Wednesday, the 25th at 12.35, in a business person special. Then Cincinnati turns red Friday, August 27th at 7.35, Saturday, the 28th at 7.05, and Sunday, the 29th at 1.35, when kids get a baseball jacket free. Call 463-1000. If you love Italian food products, you got to root for Cheddo because they've got all kinds of food. Off of more than 100 fine Italian food products on your grocery shelf. And by the way, Cheddo donates $200 for every Phillies home run to the Philadelphia Child Guidance Clinic. They've donated a whole bunch of money this year, and hopefully a whole bunch more will come later. And we'll see if Terry Mulholland can get loose and settle down here in the second inning. Grand slam home run by Todd Zeal in the first inning with nobody out, 4 nothing Cardinals. And this is Tracy Woodson, and he pops it up first base side. Cruck off the line, and he grabs it one away. So after the first four batters reach base, Mulholland has retired four in a row. Gives us a chance to wish a happy birthday to Wilson Andrews. Watching the game with his dad, longtime Prism subscribers. Make that William. <laughs> Trying to read Tony's writing here. William Andrews. <laughs> Guy writes like a doctor. Ground ball to second. No offense to the doctor, but we kid. Oh, you meant that. I know you did. Hey, what happened? Two quick outs. Well, that's what you think these two guys would both do tonight. Oh, well, of course. Maybe, you know, maybe it was just that Terry had trouble. As some pitchers do in the first inning, they find good location. You saw he was wild a little bit up, had a few pitches out of the strike zone in control. I've never seen him bending and stretching so much. That's why he thinks you know, there was something that he just couldn't get loose, and it hurt him, obviously. That's not Terry Mulholland to get hit like that that early. Ali Say of the batter, he got a base hit on a 3-1 pitch his first time up and scored on Zeal's homer. Right call. Two outs, nobody on base in the second inning. Nice 
crowd tonight, huh? Huge crowd, just like last night. Probably be right in the same neighborhood as the Phillies and the Cardinals play too. Don't forget the business person special tomorrow afternoon at 12.30. Can't make it to the ballpark? Tune us in. We'll be on at 12 o'clock with Larry Rose's pregame. Found out of way. The game begins at 12.30. It'll be Kurt Schilling for the Phillies. Donovan Osborne for St. Louis. Here is Schilling who will be tomorrow afternoon's pitcher. Bring out your little Rockabella hats because it'll be a little, a little warm here tomorrow. Actually, it's cooled down fairly nice right now. We got a little breeze in the booth. Who's it hit? It's not in this corner. <laughs> what are you nuts? Maybe it's Tony over here. Two and two. Breeze. Yeah. Whatever, whatever country you're in right now, you got a breeze working, huh? There's none here. <laughs> you have to think positive. You always have to think positive. Tried to check, did he? Yep. And it's three and two. No appeal to Terry Tata. Now they're going to appeal, and Tata says no. Or yes, he didn't swing. Two issued by Mulholland. That's already a lot for him. Last three starts, Mulholland walked one batter in each game. Ozzie Smith, a base hit up the middle, scoring in the first inning. Breeze blowing here tonight. Well, it's it's blowing down. And that's and eight, hitting the field. That's 800 feet in the air, word for it. Right. And then it's kind of bouncing up through the stands. You don't buy that. No. Bounce back. Hey, whatever it takes to keep you mentally happy, I'm, I'm <laughs> all for it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I I do know I have to be back by 12 in the little home. I mean, look at Ozzy Smith. This is the 16th year in the big leagues. He's 38, and he seems to get a little better with age. Last year, he had 295. The year before that, 285. And those were kind of his two best years out of the last seven or eight. Fouls it off right side, and it will go out of play. And this year, we look up, and he's hitting 287. I guess you might. Ozzy Smith kind of like a good bottle of red wine. He just gets better with age. He did a lot of strength work a few years ago, and since that time, he's not an out in the lineup anymore the way he used to be. Zeal evidently did a lot of that in the offseason, too. They say that's really helped him. Well, thinks he's getting squeezed right now because you don't see him react to umpire as much, and he's done it several times tonight. He's really old poker face out there. He doesn't show much emotion. Two balls and two strikes. Step off. Move. And he almost got Ali Sayer. And Ali Sayer had a very short lead. Well, he just did get back. Tries to get him when they're making that little bit of a move towards second. What a pickoff throw he's got. And it's so quick, it's just a snap throw. And he's so strong with that short arm. You know how many base runners he's picked off in the past. There he goes, and it's foul away. So the Cardinals run on a 2-2 count as Ozzie Smith fouls it right side now to play. Well, Holland already at 50 pitches. And not a good ratio for him. is giving up that 50 pitch thing. For a while there, this would have been his alley for the night. And there he goes again, rip the left field. Thompson is there and makes the play. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left. Four nothing Cardinals after an inning and a half. Loosen your tie, take off your coat, roll up your sleeves. It's a business person special. Thursday, July 29th at 1235. Compliments of Mellon BSFS. Go ahead, you deserve a break. Call 463-1000.
Dream Week, there's still room in week number two, so call 938-1200. You'll live, learn, laugh, play with the pros in Clearwater, Florida next year. And it's Dream Week reunion now here at Veterans Day of the Night. Look for the guys down on the field that participated in Dream Week last year as they step forward and are introduced to the crowd here and their family and friends at the vet. And one guy that just stepped forward is a guy named Kurt Doles, who I think has gone six, seven times. And does he get better or worse? He gets worse. <laughs> There's another jam. How about this? Tell him. Three of them. Three out of four hitters. You talk about the pinpoint control that Tooks very happy. Watch the location of this pitch in the strike zone. For a left-hander, a very tough pitch is the ball up and in under the belt or under the other hand. That's exactly where that pitch was. That's why Tewksbury only walked seven guys so far this year. He's got excellent control. How bad do you feel when you pop up to the pitcher? You're embarrassed. You're really yeah. embarrassed. You kind of walk back with your head down a little bit because you know you got jammed. Not only jammed, you got the peanut butter in the jam. Yeah. Because the ball's not high enough for anybody to call the pitcher off. <laughs> Darren Dalton, the batter, after Hollins pops up. Third in the league and walks with... 77 of them, tied for third in RBIs with 71. There's Darren's numbers off Tewksbury. We're talking about Dream Week tonight, our good friend Bob Perlman up here in the booth with us. He's been there eight times, and a guy who was there a couple times, Pete Hellman. It's his birthday tonight, and they got a nice letter from his mom. He just had a real good time down there. He plays pretty good third base. Happy birthday to Pete. Dream Week reunion, a lot of fun meeting some of the guys, seeing them again tonight. You know, it's so much fun down there, too. I have to tell you, my first visit was last year. Rip to right, fair or foul, it is a... Foul. Uh, it's not going to be that kind of night. There's a lot of people down the right field line kind of blowing that ball to go fair, maybe hit the foul pole. You can see how far it just does go foul as the ball goes right down towards the foul pole and then just hooks maybe oh, a couple of feet. That yeah, was close. Pretty close to hitting the screen out there. So it's one and two now on Dalton. And he hits a fly ball to deep center with there's plenty of room for Jordan, it looks like. Yep, runs it down at the warning track. Dalton hits two balls hard off Tewksbury. But just a long fly ball. They're two away for Eisenreich. Eisenreich batting 360 here at the vet this year. 381 in his last 21 games. The guy who came here to be an extra man to pinch hit or has really turned into almost the everyday right fielder. Tewksbury runs that sinker ball down and away for a strike. Breaking ball, one and one. Tewksbury was signed as a triple-A free agent by Louisville in December of 88. That's how far down his career had gone. And he said Eisenberg. And he's one of the league's finer pitchers. And that guy is one of the league's finer hitters. You know, it's funny. He was talking with Dennis Menke yesterday. He said, you know, I can't stand the way Eisenreich makes hitting so simple. See the ball? Hit it. Now that ball was a slider down on it. Most left-hand batters will pull that ball, and if they do get a base hit, it's a base hit between first and second on the ground, or down the line for double, right? Eisenreich hit it to left center for base hit. Bill Thompson, the former Cardinal. Ozzy Smith gets a tough hop, and he'll have to go to first, and he got it. No, oh, Tewksbury gets a fill. He's out here in the second. No runs a hit, no errors in one line. For two, four nothing Redbirds. It's a really good-looking Phillies road jersey, free for kids 14 and under, compliments of Gatorade, when the Phillies play the match Sunday, August 15th at 135. Get a free New Jersey when the Phillies play New York. Call 463-1000. If you're looking for great movies, keep your TV tuned to Prism next week for movies like City of Joy with Patrick Swayze, Falling from Grace, John Cougar Mellencamp. Stay tuned with John Ritter and Pam Dauber. Love Hurts with Jeff Daniels, Mo Money with Damon Waymans, and A League of Their Own with Gina Davis and Tom Hanks. Just some of the great movies coming your way this August on Prism, the only place to be in the summer of 93. Bernard Gilkey waited out a walk in the first inning, and then scored ahead of Zeal's grand slam. Zeal waits on deck. It's at foul, third base side. 
Gilkey right on top of that plate. Anything inside, you know he's got to pull it or he's going to hit it off his instep. How about a happy birthday to Elizabeth Palmieri, Woodbury, New Jersey, 53, and Max Traker, Fort Lip, PA. He's 88 as Gilkey fouled this one off. Also, Alan Fairchild of Reading, he's 26. He has muscular dystrophy and is on a respirator. A great Phillies fan. So we wish all three of you a very happy birthday. Count of one and two on Gilkey batting in the three hole tonight in Jeffrey's spot. And he gets jammed and hits it to right field. Eisenreich calls Dykstra off and makes the play. And now Mulholland's starting to pitch a little better, but here comes a guy that killed him in the first inning. Zeal with a booming grand slam home run to left center. Did you see his first major league grand slam? Did you ever hit any? Yes, I had uh, five, maybe six, I know. Might have been five. You would think I would remember yeah, right. I hit each one. One of my bigger grand slams was in 1978. I was playing for the Yankees. I was called to pitch it. This had to be fun to hit. We were, we were losing, and this is when uh, Reggie and Billy had gotten the big fight. So I was called in to pinch hit, and I was in the training room laying down, <laughs> and they found me, and Larry McGraw was the pitcher, and I hit a slider over the uh, right center field fence, ended up, we won the game, and the bad thing about it is they released McGraw the next day. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I hit that. the home run, or they just wanted to get rid of him, I don't know what, but uh, that was on our way to a, a pennant that year, 78, and we had to play... Uh, I was talking to Bucky Dent about it, who's the third base coach here for the Cardinals. Bucky hit that big home run off Mike Torres to help the Yankees win the game and then go on it and eventually end up to win the to win the World Series. Everybody in Boston remembers Bucky Dent's name. They'll, he'll live in infamy there. Third base coach now for the Cardinals. Two balls and two strikes to Zeal. Struck him out. Mulholland is starting to settle into a little groove as he looks like he's got it all going right now, but the Phils are in a 4-0 hole. Great location, great pitch. Look at the slider break down and in. Really out of the strike zone. He got Zeal to go after him. Mulholland had a tough time trying to get that pitch over in the first inning. Well, everybody takes a, a deep breath because now he's starting to pitch well. At least he's okay. He just couldn't get loose in that first inning, and it cost him. But I know Fergosi was sitting in that dugout thinking, oh, no, I don't have to go to the bullpen in the first inning tonight. Witten grounded out his first time up. It's another one towards third. And the Cardinals go three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Time now to open the collector's corner. Larry Rosen takes us on a tour of the All-Star Fan Fest during the All-Star break in Baltimore. Here is the ultimate, call it baseball heaven for the memorabilia collector and fans of all ages. Welcome to the 1993 All-Star Fan Fest. We're letting all ticket times in for today. That's all ticket times for today. This is the 1993 All-Star Fan Fest at Baltimore's Convention Center, where over All-Star Weekend, 300,000 square feet of pure baseball was on display. A place to get lost in your love of the game. For the collector, over 100 former Major League players were available at autograph sessions, and as always, cards of all varieties. For the more esoteric taste, how about a seat from your favorite stadium? A chair from old Connie Mack Stadium? Price tag, $500. Or pins from World Series, All-Star Games, and more. A jersey from bygone days, and bygone teams could be yours. But more than that, this celebration of the game included interactive video batting cages, where you could actually hit off your favorite hurler, pose as a cardboard cutout of your favorite player, see the game's history on widescreen TV, or simply share memories to last a lifetime. And best of all, several hundred thousand dollars were raised for the Children's Defense Fund, all part of the All-Star Fan Fest in Baltimore. 
three games coming up here with the Phillies all on Prism tomorrow with a day game beginning at 12 o'clock with a pregame show and Larry Rosen and then Friday night 8 9 to 7 30 Saturday night at 7 pregame show a half hour earlier Send birthday wishes tonight to Mike Smithwick of Medford his daughter Lori does a great job down in the sales office and asked us to wish him a happy birthday so happy birthday to you Mike Mickey Morandini the batter pitches outside to Morandini and then Mulholland, the top of the order, and Lenny Dykstra. Four-nothing Cardinals on Zeal's slam in the first. The Phillies have been desperately trying to get Morandini to hit more down on the ball. I don't know if you want to say hit the top half of the ball or whatever you want to do, but he's been hitting too many balls in the air lately, and as you can see by his average, it's not what it should be. That's trouble. And look at Ozzy. What a great play by Ozzy Smith. Boy, did he come on quick and get that short hop and threw out more indeed. Fine play by Ozzie. You know, I had a chance to talk to Ozzie Smith about that play last night in the first inning as we watched this ball. Watch Ozzie come in, get a great jump on it, and then quickly take that little half step in the air and make a strong throw. He mentioned to me, Chris, the fact that the turf out there, everybody thinks that the turf is flat level. He said there are a lot of spots out there where the turf is uneven, and when he went down for that ball last night, the ball hit one of those spots and bounced up. That's why he hit it in the back of his hand. Hurry up, Terry. Hurry up. Hurry up. Safe. You can see that coming with Mark Witten out there. The great Mark Witten throwing arm, and he almost threw him out at first. Oh, look at this. Whoop, did he throw? I'm telling you, that's a back back play. Yes, it is. One more time. Witten, look at this guy. With a gun out there, and Mulholland just did get on the bag with his left foot. First base umpire, Terry Tate of the crew chief, right there to make the call. Man, I'll tell you what, that is something. You don't see much of that kind of throwing anymore. No, not anymore. You know, it's great to see a, a young player like Whit come up in the big leagues with a strong arm like that. Not too many guys have those strong arms anymore. You remember Reggie Smith and uh, Kenny Singleton, Clemente. Yeah, we had a guy around here for a few years used to throw guys out at first, and that was Glenn Wilson. He did it several times from right field for the Phillies. Dykstra, deep to right field, went in a long run. He won't get there. It bounces off the wall. Mulholland stumbled coming around second, and Ball will hold him at third. So Lenny Dykstra with a double to right center. The Phillies have a chance to get back in it. Because Dykstra has some sock, we know he's got 12 homers. And Witten playing fairly shallow for the strong Dykstra. And this ball hits about halfway on the warning track. Now realistically, folks, that ball is, he's got to be a lot closer. That ball should be caught. But Witten playing way too shallow on Dykstra. And it might cost the Cardinals. 28th double on the year for Dykstra. And a nine-game hitting streak for Lenny. And Duncan swings and misses at that big sweeping breaking ball. Good pitch by Tewksbury because he knows Duncan's a first ball fastball hitter. They have the infield back to the Cardinals. They'll concede a run on a ground ball, of course, with a four-run lead. And the Phillies need to get something out of this. And they will. They're going to get two out of it. Mulholland, and here comes Dykes right on his tail, and it's 4-2 as Duncan knocks in a couple. Well, that's a good break, too. I'll tell you why. Smith on Morandini's chopper. And look how close Mulholland 
one was being thrown out at first. Have two outs and nobody on. <laughs> now look where Mark Witt is in right field with Crook the batter. He's back maybe four or five steps deeper than he was playing Lenny Dykstra. Crook to deep right center. It looks like Jordan has room. Oh, he crushed that and it's caught deep on the warning track in right center field. <laughs> Phillies are starting to swing the bats all of a sudden on this hot night. They came out at Tewksbury, really made them look bad at first, and now they're swinging them. Well, I said it before, when you get jammed, as Tewksbury hit in with about three of the Philly batters, you kind of get a little embarrassed, and you go back up. Now you know what to expect, and you turn it up a notch a little bit. Collins, he popped up to Tewksbury. Rips a shot to left. Deal got a little leather on it and slowed it up. Boy, they're hitting him hard all of a sudden. Oh. Here comes Dalton. Hollins, as Chris mentioned, popped up to the pitcher on a real weak pop-up. Decides to go the other way as Teaksbury tries to do something different with the pitch. Picks himself up another hit. Sorry, because Joe Coleman's on his way out. That'll give us a chance to wish Milton and Julia Ford in Edmondson, New Jersey, a very happy 53rd wedding anniversary. They hardly ever miss a Phillies game, we're told. And that came from Michael Ford. A happy, birth, happy anniversary to those two. Hey, happy anniversary to Grant Urenko from Pottsville. 45 years they've been married. Mr. and Mrs. Grant Urenko, that's from their two sons. I'd like to remind you that this copyrighted telecast, and it's going to be a good one tonight, it looks like, is presented by authority of the Phillies, and it's intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form or otherwise used without the express written consent of the Phillies. Joe Coleman on his way back to the dugout, and Darren Dalton, who hit a fly ball to deep center field his first time up. Dalton with very good lifetime numbers off Tewksbury, including a couple of homers. Side corner for a strike. I tried to go right back with the same pitch, Chris, but maybe an inch or two outside to get Dalton to go after it. In. They trail it four to two. There are two outs. It's the Dutch. Way outside. Three and one. Eisenreich on deck. Mary tried to be a little sneaky. When you don't have that overpowering fastball, you got to finesse a little bit. He tried to throw a backdoor breaking ball to Dalton. The ball just did come back towards the outside part of the plate, but not enough for a strike. Three and one on Dalton. See if he challenges him. They're going to stay away. Sinker ball hit the deep left center field. Back goes Jordan. Still going back at the wall. It's off the wall and in play. Duncan scores. Here comes Holland. He'll score. Darren Dalton with a triple. We're tied at four. Wow, what a comeback in this inning. Well, you mentioned that Dalton Reminded me of 
some of the plays that Gary Maddox used to make where he'd leap up on that wall. Kutzker almost throws a wild pitch there to Eisenhower. Yeah, he did make a great effort. The Jay set off his glove. Darren Dawn with his third triple, RBI 72 and 73. Four run first for the Cardinals, four run third for the Phillies. He hit it hard, but right to Zio, who throws out Eisenreich, but we got ourselves a new ball game, and this crowd is one. Four runs, five hits, no errors, and one left. Four, four. If you've got a group of 25 or more, we'll give you a great time at a Phillies game. For all the details about a special package for your group at a Phillies game, call 463-5000. Head back here at Veterans Stadium, Chris Miller with Gary Maddox. Fall behind 4 to nothing in the first inning with one of your best out on the mound. A face with a guy like Tuesburg, is it tough to get your head down? Well, very easily, but the series means so much. The Phillies know the importance of getting out there winning. The one thing that Fergosi has instilled in them, and that is not to give up. They go out there, try to play the game the way you're capable of playing, the way you've done it all year, and good things can happen. The Phillies are a good hitting ball club, no matter who's on the mound, and I think they've showed it right there. This has to be a great confidence booster, as you mentioned, to go up against Tewksbury, who uh, is the Cardinals' best pitcher. And you saw the shot of Darren Dalton before Jordan steps up, and Dalton has been struggling for RBIs and got a huge two-out triple there to tie this game. And see if Mo Holland can hold it now. Well, I'm sure said he fell out by Jordan. Oh, what a play by Milk Thompson as he had a great defensive year or what? I tell you, Bill Thompson just went back to the wall. That's a great play because the wall can be very intimidating. You'll see that Bill doesn't have time to stop. He has to go right into the wall there. Gets his knee on the pad. That saves him some injuries right there. But I mean, he's up in the air before he gets a chance to look back and grab that ball. Look at that non-stop. He's up in the air right now and facing the other way when he catches that ball. He judges it, then turns and faces the wall. Fantastic concentration there. What a game tonight. <laughs> Brian Jordan, who had a little bit of trouble with Dalton's ball, the left center. You want to talk about that, that ball that Dalton hit? Well, that's a tough play. He had a long, long way to go on the ball that Darren hit. Foul out of play by Pappas. The ball's jumping tonight. Yeah, it? it's a hitter's night all of a sudden. And what, it, what happened out there was Jordan knew that he was going to have to climb the fence, or he felt he was going to have to, and he got more concerned about that than he did about focusing on the ball. What Mill Thompson did was show a lack of concern, a lack of fear for that wall, and focus completely on the ball. That's why he was able to make the catch. And Thompson, they're gonna, Dan Stevens is going to put a highlight reel together of his catches. He's had a number of them this year. Pitch to Pappas is a breaking ball over for a strike. One ball and two strikes. So, well, Holland gives up four runs without anybody out in the first inning. The Phillies have come back to tie it at four, and we are in the fourth. Both teams have had four run innings. Two and two. On deck is Woodson. Eric Papp is playing tonight for Pagnazzi. Nothing wrong with Pagnazzi. They're just resting him. Talk about an Iron Man. Darren Dalton has started 92 of the team's 102 ball games thus far this year. He probably will not play tomorrow. Swing and a miss by Pappas, who's gone down twice tonight on strikes. That's three for Mulholland. And Terry going upstairs and reaching back just a tad to throw that ball right by Pappas. I mean, again, we talk about Terry's location every time he pitches. He sets the hitters up so well. A lot of times, he's able to throw that fastball by him. Happy birthday tonight to B. Kirschenblatt, city commissioner in Ventnor, Ventnor City. Came from her son, Mark. And there's Mo Holland bending over again. See, he was doing that in the first inning a lot. And that's what we were talking about, that something just didn't seem right with him. And he settled down and pitched well again. Now all of a sudden he's starting to do those touch his toes again. As if there's something wrong with his back. 
And now Dalton's concerned, Padres concerned, Mariano Duncan in there. Aaron Dalton wants to make sure he's okay. There's Fergosi taking a look. Oh, he doesn't want to have another pitcher go down with an injury. And it looked like he had started straightened himself out after the first. The Phillies have great momentum going right now, too, coming back at the Cardinals the way they have. Woodson pops it up, right side, shallow. Eyes and right, back a couple of steps. And Merle Allen has a 1-2-3 inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. But nobody left on base to the bottom of the fourth inning, tied at four. Business person special number three is coming up tomorrow afternoon. Won't be long. That'll begin at 12.35, so come on out. That's a third of five of these midweek day games that everybody likes so much. And their compliments to LBSF as 1463-1000 for your tickets. Or come on out, and how many times does a guy make a great play? And here he comes. We're going to give another shot at that play. Watch Milt. When he catches that ball, he is facing the wall. You see him hit his knee on the way up. Now watch as the ball goes in his glove. He's facing the wall there. He completes his turn right there. Just a fantastic play. Great concentration and lack of fear of injuring your body. Well, the more you see that, the more remarkable that catch is. It is. Thompson 2-0. Milt swung at the first pitch his first time up and grounded his shortstop Ozzy Smith. Milt's made a lot of great catches this year, and what happens is you make a few, then you start looking to do them. I mean, as an outfielder, you really visualize making great catches sometimes, and that helps you stay focused and in the game. Pulled a grand slam back off the bat of Bob Guerin in San Diego. And Tewksbury, who does not walk many, is 3-0. And, oh. and he'll throw a strike and does. Tewksbury in his last outing, Gary, had a 55 and a third inning walk a streak in. 55 and a third innings. These guys bring some streaks with them. Ozzie Smith not striking out. We saw that broken. And there is a rare walk for Tewksbury who walks his career 1.40 for nine innings. Tops among active pitchers. That's out of respect for this Phillies ball club because Tewksbury, you know, against a good hitting ball club, they're going to get their hits off of you. And they are racking him around. They started off with him jamming them like nobody had seen in a long time, and all of a sudden they started to hit him. More indeed, Ozzie Smith made a great play on him last time to get him out. Tewksbury is a guy you can run on. He's about a 1 3, 1 4 guy to home plate on certain pitches. And he will throw over just to try and keep him close. Zachary Clay, who's celebrating his birthday here at the ballpark, for sending us down some of his birthday cake. He's down with family and friends at Box 408, enjoying this one. How can you not enjoy this one? This is action-packed tonight. And Tewksbury is getting a little wild all of a sudden. Maybe he's starting to nibble a little bit more after that shelling last night. <laughs> this guy is one of the best in the league. As I mentioned, he gives up a lot of hits. 158 hits and 134 two-third innings. He normally won't hurt himself with walks, and he's walked the leadoff man, Will well, Thompson. You know, a lot of times, uh, there's his, his inning pitch, and now it's updated. You can see the, the player, when he looks at a pitcher's stats like that, the first thing he looks at is how many hits does this guy give up in the, in the course of nine innings? And if it's more than uh, the innings pitched, and we like to say, I'll feel comfortable against this guy because he's going to be somewhere around the plate and we know we're going to put the ball in play and get our hits. What Tewksbury relies on, though, is guys not having the patience. You're going to swing at some bad pitches. You may get one hit here or another hit there, but eventually the guys are going to get themselves out enough. And I think his, his theory that if he has control, he's going to win is, is proven out. And he misses outside 2-1. and one. I think Dalton showed that in his at-bat by staying off pitches, getting the 2-1 to one and then ripping the triple. As Larry Boa goes through the sides, Terry Mulholland waits on deck. Hey. 
two scurry throws over. It is a hit and run count, but the Phillies, as everybody knows, are, their philosophy from their managers are not a big running team, a hit and running team necessarily. And they don't run, and the pitches. A late call by Wally Bell for a strike. Or he thought it was outside. It's two and two now on Mickey. Nick Morandini just two for 23 lifetime off two scores. Rip. Nice play. There you have a tag play. It's short. They get him. Nice play by Tracy Woodson. They turn it into a 3-6 double play. He's not holding the runner on. Morandini has an extra base hit. Hit on the line. I mean, this, is, this ball is really hit hard, but Woodson is right there. Off-speed pitch. Morandini, a guy you play the other way. But Woodson is right there because of holding the runner on. Steps on the back, fires down to Ozzie Smith. And again, Bill Thompson hesitating on the slide again, like he did last night, almost causing an injury. Mo Holland gets jammed and loops at the second. Terry got a base hit his last time up. Now the Phillies are out here in the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We got a good one. Stay with us. 4-4. Four, four. Beats one foul, third base side. 4-6-0 and for the Phillies. 4-3, all of those hits coming in the first inning and no errors for the Cardinals. Since the old grand slam, Mulholland's allowed one base runner. And that was on a walk. Cardinals take a little, little time to regroup after giving up a four-run lead. I mean, they jumped out four runs thinking they maybe wouldn't have to look back. Yeah, because for all intents and purposes, it looked like that guy was struggling. Terry Mulholland is at 75 pitches. But he is right at his ship. And you know, if you're an everyday player, you say, geez, get the guy a four-run lead and they can't even hang on to it. That's your best pitcher. <laughs> Strikeout number four for Mulholland. Terry, I mean, he's not wasting any time. Just paints the black, a little outside maybe, but he's a pitcher and he can. Hey, Phillies fans, bring four leaf candy wrappers and the completed offer certificate to the Phillies ticket office and receive a 600-level reserve ticket to any Phillies home game in July. Leaf candy brands include Milk Duds, Jolly Rancher Candies, Payday, Heat Bar, and Rain Blow Gum. Look for details at the bed or wherever leaf candies are sold. Tickets subject to availability and void where prohibited. Luis Alisea let off the ball game with a base hit, scored, and he's walked. Did a good job out of the leadoff hole tonight, normally occupied by Gilkey. However, they moved Gilkey to the three hole when Jeffries couldn't play with a sore back. Terry Mulholland, we've mentioned time again, has to be ahead of the hitter in order to be effective. Was not the first at bat against Alisea, and he ended up getting a single, as did Ozzie Smith. Anniversary wishes tonight to Ann and Joe Wojcik in Swedesburg, Pennsylvania. Long and long-time Phillies fans. Kathy and Frank Cooper. Whoops. Good try. Boom. She fires a seed up. She <laughs> gets some helmets on up there. What she should have done was look for somebody who was booing her and then just fire it at him. <laughs> Say, here, buddy, see if you can catch it. 2-2. Two, two. And it's a 3-2 count on Ali Say, who's done just what you want a leadoff man to do. He's been very patient. There's a 
What about the car that caroms off of there? It's a tough play. It takes guts to get in front of that. And Ali Say has been on all three times tonight. That's walk number three issued by Mulholland. And that is very, very unlike Terry Mulholland. Last time he walked three batters in the game was June 14th at Montreal. Seven starts ago. I mean, he's walked three in, what, four and a third inning. Two of them, the leadoff man, Ali Say, and here's Ozzie Smith, one for two with a base hit, and a fly ball to left. Guy not afraid to hit with two strikes on him, obviously. Ooh, Buck him out on the outside corner. He threw three perfect pitches there. He did. This one, 0 oh, 2, you rarely look for the pitcher to throw a strike, but Terry Mulholland takes a chance at the outside corner. According to the umpire, he he got it. Ozzie Smith thought it was a little bit outside. That's just 12 strikeouts now for Ozzie and 401 plate appearances, but three of them in the last two games. Really? Maybe we'll get a fourth of the strikeouts against Ozzy Smith in two games. Gilkey, the batter, and Bernard takes a strike. He has walked and scored and fly to right field. Gilkey with a career high eight homers this year. It's hit hard. Dykstra will cut it off, and Ali Saya will stop at second base. So there are two on with two outs, and here comes Todd Zeal. That's the first hit since the first inning when Zeal hit his grand slam. That was supposed to be the slider, but it didn't have anything on it. It kind of stayed up in the strike zone. Terry making a bad pitch in that case. Last time up, he struck out Zeal. Two outs, two men on base, 4-4 in the fifth. Both teams with a four-run inning. The Cardinals in the first, the Phils in the third. Place has been rocking tonight. It should be when two first, first and second place team get together in a pennant race. Then now Zeal steps out and Mulholland steps off. had to stop and stretch and hopefully he can gut it out. He is such a tough guy. I mean, you saw him when Dalton went to the mound and talked to him and kept saying he was all right. Interesting that Fergosi nor Padres came out. The trainer did not come out. So if it is something that was before the game, then they, they're keeping an eye on it. What Dalton is doing, pointing, as you saw in that last shot, is they want more and need to come in and keep Ali Say a little closer at second. You see some numbers on Zeal with runners in scoring position. And now Mickey comes in behind Ali Say, as you see, and then backs off. I don't know. I don't think being concerned about Ali Say right now is uh, something. With two outs, uh, you know, he can go ahead and steal third base. You know, you really need to concentrate on getting this hitter. Especially this hitter. Who hurt him so bad his first time up. Two balls and a strike. This is the count that he hit the slam on. And he throws a breaking ball this time. Hit a fastball for the home run. But maybe Zeal might be anxious there and chase when he does it. Now it's three and one. ball strike 
tight call. Zeal can't believe it. He thought it was inside and maybe low. Throw him a 3-1 slider. He did. I think it caught part of the plate. I mean, if you look where Zeal has his hands, look at how they're over the plate. So the ball comes in underneath his hands. Yes, but they're over the plate. So it got a part of the plate coming over. Ended up a little bit inside and possibly low, but definitely caught part of the plate. Now the runners will be off, Ali Saya, and he'll keep Ooh. Now, interesting, Mulholland has uh, Zeal set up here for a fastball. He's throwing 3 0, I mean, excuse me, 3 1 breaking ball. Uh, now, what is he going to come in with? 3 and 2. 2 1 and 3 1. So I think Zeal may look, be looking for a breaking ball. He may try and sneak the fastball by him now. Fastball, he can. A good call, Gary. Here comes, who wants it? Crack Mulholland. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Crocker runs him off, and Gary Maddox, had him set up for that. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two men left on base. 4-4 four, four game. 2-1 slider, 3-1 slider. Gary Maddox says that at this point, he might be able to get him with a fastball. Well, it, it, what happens is he's able to sneak that fastball in on Zill when he's not looking at it. And that's the importance of staying ahead in the count and having good control. You see the problem with that fly ball. It's not high enough for anybody to fall. So everybody ends up going after it. So that, at the last second, Crook runs Mulholland off and lets the sure man take it. That's Terry Mulholland after the first inning. Here comes Dykstra. Lenny has popped up and doubled and scored. Dykstra with a career high 12 homers. The most home runs by a Philly center fielder since. How about Gary Maddox at 13 and 79 and 14 and 77? Yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. <laughs> There's that age of the cork bat. But oh, nice call. <laughs> Nice call. <laughs> they used a lot of that ball club. Breaking ball by Tewksbury gets it over to Dykstra. He's ahead of him over two. See, Tewksbury features the same thing Mulholland does. It's excellent control. You see the pitches. You know, he, if he makes a mistake with that breaking ball and gets behind, Lenny Dykstra can sit on the fastball. But, I mean, Tewksbury, right, those last two pitches, right on excellent breaking ball. Phillies have six hits, five of them coming in the third when they scored their four runs. So both these pitchers have pitched well tonight, except they've been hit for one inning. Dykstra, a good piece of hitting down the line as he hops. On an 0-2 pitch, he doubles into the corner, and the Phillies have the leadoff man. Oh, what a piece of hitting that one. See, this is the advantage of being left-handed. Tewksbury had Dykstra set up so well, it wasn't funny. The same way Mulholland had Zeal set up. And he tried to come back with the same pitch that Mulholland did, a fastball, but Dykstra, with two strikes, gets so protective of that strike zone, all he does is stick the head of the bat out there and it's a line drive to left field. And as you saw, double number 29 for Dykstra. He's already scored a run tonight. His 94th, which leads the majors. Tewksbury has to be shaking his head. The whole league has to be shaking their head about Lenny Dykstra. They have him set up, and yet he's still able to put the ball in play for a base hit. Now Duncan will try to hit it to the right side, move him over for Cruck. He bunts it, and it is foul. What a great try by Eric Pappas. See what Duncan is trying to do, and I'm sure it did not come from uh, the dugout, but there you see he tries to bunt the runner over. Sure, he's thinking the best way he thinks he can move him over off Tewksbury is the bunt, and you see the frustration on the face of Pappas almost got to that. Well, the Phillies would like for their number two hitter, and you should be good enough to where you can get the job done swinging the bat, which also gives you an opportunity of getting a base hit and keeping a big inning going. And Duncan does hit the ball well the other way. Mariano knocked in two his last time off of the base hit. And he does it again. Look at this thing. Nice play by Pappas. He saw that ball was not going to go foul. And Dykstra's in third on the sacrifice by Duncan. Well, watch the play Pappas makes. I'll tell you what's difficult. You know, he sees the ball. Watch him get it. He has to now turn without even looking at first base. Ball in away. Throws a strike there. Excellent play. Watch him pounce out there. He notices the breaking ball. Reaches for it. Flips off his mask. Now watch it turn and fire. Sacrifice 2-3. Cardinals have the infield back 
with the exception of Zeal, who's up at third. So they're conceding a run on a ground ball to Kruk. And Tewksbury starts it with a breaking ball low. Kruk with 57 runs batted in. He is grounded a second, fly to deep right center. And that's the guy that Phillies want to get home, Lenny Dykstra, in a 4-4 game here in the fifth inning. I was interested in talking to John Kruk this afternoon. I got at the stadium about 1 o'clock. He was soccer in the air. But we were talking about, you know, his balance of the plate. How when he is swinging the bat well, his weight is evenly distributed at the plate. He's not on his back leg, he's not on his front leg, but evenly distributed. And that allows him to bring the head of the bat through there. And he said in San Francisco, that's exactly what he was having trouble with, keeping his balance. He said last night he felt pretty good up there and did a good job of doing that. The guy said one ball hard in that. Of course, he had the five hits last night. So he has a chance to pick up an RBI here and give the Phillies the lead. 2-0. Oh. Well, it's almost like he's pitching around him right now. You know, like they want to set up a double play possibility. 3-0, oh. he hasn't even been close, so that's not too strong. I think if you look at the situation and you're tooth bearing, even if you're any pitcher, you know, though your fielders are playing back, it's hard for you to give up that run. Well, he just walked in, Barry. That is very unusual. Why? I, I think it is semi-intentional in that he now has a chance to get out of the inning without giving up a run. He knows that if he goes ahead and pitches to John Crump, chances are he's going to give that run up. And I think he uh, was a little leery of doing that. With the infield back, he, he absolutely decided he was going to walk Crump there and take his chance with Hollins. Hollins tonight popped up to Tewksbury and then single left and scored. See, Crump, not a guy you're concerned about taking off trying to steal the base. So the double play is in order, and that's where they have their infield now at double play depth. He's going to try and get Hollins with that sinker away. Starts him with a slow breaking ball that he gets over. He's going to try and get him a pitch that's on the outside, hope that Dave will try and pull it on the ground, and uh, they can end up turning the double play with one of the better double play combinations in the game. Joe Torrey looking on. Hollins hit the ball last time in the hole to left field. Another curveball misses one and one today. Two walks by Tewksbury, who came in with an average of 0 0.5 for nine innings. Now you see the look into the dugout. You know, that sign is what to do if the runner takes off in this situation. Do we throw through? Who's going to, you know, who's going to cover all that? Then comes into play. And those signs are given by the catcher out to the infielders. Stepped out. And that time Tewksbury was ready to go and he's not real happy. There's Dykstra at third base. Crock at first, there's one out. Collins to center field and deep. This will get the run home. Dykstra will tag and score. And the Phillies take a 5 4 lead. Nice piece of hitting by Dave Hollis. It was too. Spare was trying to induce a ground ball so that St. Louis Cardinals could turn, could turn two. The piece of hitting by Dave Hollins. But again, you can see Tewksbury's point. Yeah, they scored the run. We were giving it to him anyway. But he did have a chance to get the double play. Hollins takes the ball down and away from him. and does a good job of lifting that. And that's what allows him to get the ball there. And good camera work. You can see Dykstra waiting until the ball is caught before he left. Everything was legal. That was a new angle there. Have you seen that before? That excellent. Here's Dalton, who's had a hot night. Took a ball deep to center field and then tripled off the glove of Jordan and left center to knock in two. There's Real Cormier, who was in the ball game last night. Before he anticipated, he got racked a little bit himself last night. Dalton looks like he's seen Tooks very well. He, he's had good lifetime numbers off him. Two homers now, six RBIs, and well over 300 against this right hander. One ball and one strike on Darren. One and two. A little aggressive at the plate. I think Darren's problem now is that he's 
Low lane just chasing balls out of the strike zone. If you talk to Barry Bonds, he'll tell you that my stats start to fall off, my average starts to drop. Once I start to chase balls out of the strike zone, other teams fear certain hitters and they will get them to try and chase pitches. The hitter will get so frustrated that he'll start to chase the ball a little bit out of the strike zone, and the next thing you know, he's in a slump. So he comes back inside. Two and two. Tewksbury has ten hits this year himself as a batter, and he now has walked nine the whole year. <laughs> and it's the end of July. Two walks in the game for him. This gives you an idea of the control this guy has. baseman backs away and see what he's done is thrown Darren Gulf two fastballs now I, it'd be foolish to try and come back in there with again I think three two we got to see a breaking ball from him in this situation breaking ball fouled off fast two I mean he's sitting right in on the fastball zoned in again you can make those kind of educated guesses as long as you don't have to go there and hit <laughs> Did this ever come into play with you as an offensive oh, player? On, on paper, it works. I mean, even in the games, if you have the guts to go ahead up there and guess, you know, you can get away with it. It was tough, it was tough to do all this when you swung at the first thing. <laughs> three balls and two strikes. You put me in my place. <laughs> he walked it. There's three of them now. Now he has ten hits and ten walks. He's finally matched it up. A 3-2 breaking ball to Dalton there, and he figures I'm going to take my chances with Eisenreich in this spot. Torrey not happy. Bob Tewksbury with two walks in one inning. And uh, he and Joe Coleman are going to have a little talk. Pitching coach. And Eisenreich, the batter, he has singled and grounded out. What's bad is he has to know that Dalton hits Tewksbury pretty good, but Eisenreich's a pretty good hitter in his own right. First base side. Eisenreich's hit two balls to the left side tonight. One through the hole. Actually, a line drive to left, and the other caught by Zeal in the hole. Jim Eisenreich at 3.41. What a pickup this guy's been. right there. He'll put it away, but the Phillies take the lead here in the inning. One run on one hit. No errors and two left. Five, four fills after five. The Phillies look to cook a Canadian goose when they play Montreal Tuesday, August 10th and Wednesday, August 11th at 735. And Thursday, August 12th at 1235 at a business person special. Then Bonilla, Doc, and the Mets make a house call Friday, August 13th, 735. Saturday, August 14th, 705. And Sunday, August 15th at 135. When kids 14 and under get a free Phillies road jersey. Call 463-1000. New item is coming up. It's the road jersey, a brand new gift for kids 14 and under. A gray shirt looks just like the Phillies road jersey. And you can get one on Sunday, August 15th when the Mets come to town. That will be at 135. Compliments of Gatorade. It's a must for all kids. Call 463-1000 for your tickets and stop by the Center City Ticket Office at Mellon, PSFS, Broad, and Chestnut Street. Again, we'd like to pick Zachary Clay for that birthday cake. You and I have been working on it. Yeah, I'm kind of enjoying what I've had here so far. But there's three forks on the plate, so I'm not the only one digging in. <laughs> Enjoy your birthday, Zachary, down there in Box 408, because we're enjoying the cake. Fanatic have a little fun between innings. That old Nancy Sinatra song, these boots are made for walking. And here comes Mark Whitten. Followed by Brian Jordan and Eric Pappas with the switch hitter, batting right-handed against Mulholland, who has the lead for the first time in the ball game. And he gets him way out front, fly ball to right field. Dykstra runs Eisenreich off it, one away. Is that change up? I don't know what it was. It's I think he's looking for the off-speed pitch. He's got a running fastball away, just chased it out of the strike zone. So watch him chase this ball here. Slider that came back in. Yeah, it was some off speed. It like it was a backup slider, almost went away from him, it looked like. He got Witten to take a really bad swing on the first pitch. 
Brian Jordan, the batter, he has flied out and then lined out to Thompson, who made just a spectacular catch against the wall in left field. People are going to find out the later tonight that Terry Mulholland, who has a big heart anyway, is using a lot of it tonight because he has just not been right. Well, you got to shoot him to get him out of games a lot of times. He is a competitor. Swaying at a mess. Never changes that expression either. You wind him up though, he'll talk to your ear a lot. <laughs> okay, he's an interesting guy. Fouled away. Very bright man. Has a, you know, a lot of opinions on things. He takes that mound. He is all business. <laughs> First day, yeah. It'll be in, in with Jeff Cooper and Mark Anderson later. As they keep these guys patched together throughout the long season. What an important part they are in ball club. I know Jeff Cooper had to prolong my career a couple of years. But the things he could come up with to get you back in the game. Unbelievable. He's got that ballot wire working overtime right now. This yeah. time of the year. I'm going to be honest with you. I still go to him. <laughs> <laughs> you do too when you get it. Oh, boy, that looked like it was there. We all do. Two balls and two strikes. Here's Kevin Stocker. They think he might come back and play tomorrow. As Jeff and Mark Anderson have done a lot of work with him. Struck him out. Another foul tip held on to by Dalton. Who's going to stat on that? That's happened a lot this year. Well, it's that slider that breaks down and in that the hitters swing over the top of and just get a piece of it. 100 pitches for Terry Mulholland here in the sixth inning. He threw it, what, 30 in the first, or over, maybe over 30 in the first inning. That pitch, like 65% uh, of his other pitches, a touch strike. What a great catch by a guy. The first throw of the upper deck, he had his glove and just snared that wicked foul. Off the bat of Eric Pappas. Stay tuned after this half inning. Larry Rosen has a feature with one of the great broadcasters in the game who's here tonight, Jack Buck. On the Cardinals. See you. One and two on Pappas, who has struck out twice tonight. Mulholland has six. You know, you can recognize great broadcasters when you hear other broadcasters do them. Yeah. There he is. That's his son, Joe. To the left on your screen there, Joe Buck working with the Cardinals this year for the first time. Close, but no, and it's three and two. Phillies are on the game of the week with Joe Morgan and his partner. John Miller? Yeah, we're doing the game. John does an excellent imitation of Harry Callis. See, you're, yeah. you're right. <laughs> and he walked him, so Mulholland with four walks. Both these guys tonight having trouble with their control. And he had Pappas buried before losing him. Do you do a Harry Callis? Or do you just worship him from afar? I do one. Uh, yeah, I do one. I, I can do Harry really well at about uh, 2 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been with him enough times at that hour. <laughs> Here's Woodson. Two outs. We won't even try that one. Oh, the step off move and Kruk doesn't get it, and that'll be an error on Mulholland. Looks like he pulled Kruk with that one, and Kruk comes away limping. Oh, no. No, he's not hurt. I saw him. Just when he went, almost as he got to the ball, he turned his ankle a little bit, but nothing serious. So Pappas on at second base now with two outs. And Woodson with a chance to tie the ball game. Chutesbury is on deck. There is bullpen activity. Looks like Cormier is throwing again, the left-hander. And there he is. Saw him in the game last night. Oh, it looked like he was breezing in this inning. Two outs, nobody on base. 0-2 on Pappas. Walks and then a throwing error by Terry. And 1-0 to Woodson. Brown 
ground ball to Holland. Throws him out. <laughs> Truck goes down and hangs on to it. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. Time for tonight's Vintage Vision as Larry Rosen looks back at the career of Hall of Fame broadcaster. There he is right there, the great Jack Buck. Snyder with the Cardinals, Jack Buck with the Cardinals, and spring training for Dan White's radio. The sounds of a baseball life. In 40 years behind the microphones for the St. Louis Cardinals, Jack Buck has gracefully described the exploits of Stan Musial as a youngster. Matured with Bob Gibson's Cardinals. Reveled in the career of Ozzie Smith. Through it all, Buck has shown the utmost respect for the game and deflected the attention from himself he could not, however, duck the spotlight in 1990 when he won the Ford Frick Award and a rightful place in baseball's Hall of Fame. I guess we're all egotists to some degree, but the biggest uh, fun that I had, the most fun, uh, I, I borrowed two jet airplanes and a luxury bus and they went over to Cooperstown with all eight of my kids and their families. We just had a wonderful weekend and I was more happy for the kids because I knew they were proud of me than I was for myself and that's the truth. And there he is, what a great guy, Jack Buck, and uh, Larry, Larry Rosen with a nice feature on him, and that really captured him because he, he does kind of just, he's laid, about as laid back as you can be. You know, but I think as a player about Jack Buck, he, you get the impression that he knows you very well. He, everybody he talks to, you get the impression that he knows you, and what a warm person. Yes, he is. It's not an act with Jack Buck. No. It's just, that's his personality. I mean, he comes by the booth to say hello uh, all the time. Just a very warm human being. He's usually got a good joke, too. Dude. Some he can use in the banquets in the offices. i got to hit him up for one. Foul away. Great sense of humor. Hey, we'd like to send congratulations along to Carrie Mulvey and Steve Hudson from WPHL TV 17 on the birth of their new child, Connor Hudson. Born July 27th, that was yesterday. Connor, six pounds, six ounces. And mom and son doing just fine, so congratulations to the Hudson family. Eric Gregg said yes on that, or no on that pitch, and it's two and one. Milt Thompson, Thompson, Mordini, and Mulholland here. Seven, eight, nine for the Phils in the sixth. Just very working in and out effectively as usual. See Milt shaking his hand kind of at himself, knowing he shouldn't be that aggressive with the bat, just trying to put it in play. Just very backs him off and runs a full count. It's hard not to be overly aggressive when you're playing against your former mates. You know he loved that catch he made today. Jammed him there and he rolls one to Woodson. Steps on the bag, one away. Three walks tonight for Tewksbury, or four walks and no strikeouts. Three walks and no strikeouts. Mardini hasn't had much luck tonight. Great play by Ozzie Smith and then he hit a rocket at Woodson. First is last time up and turned into a double play. Tinsbury at pitch number 75. And losing the ball game, Mahalan over 100 at this point. Here's a base hit for Mickey. Whitman will cut it off. You don't run on this guy, but he's going to throw behind him. Warren was going to go, and a lot of times you're dead meat if you run on Witten. Well, you can see the route that Witten took on that. He was daring him to go. Instead of coming in and cutting, look, look how he, look, see him go back on the ball? That's almost an invitation for the guy to go ahead and take the next base. And Warren Dini, you know, bluffed it, which is the thing to do, but respect the guy's arm because he can throw. If you throw like that, you like to show it off, too. Throwing behind him, though, as soon as he throws that ball back in the direction of first base, you move to second, you can't get it. Well, Holland will probably be up there to bunt. Terry's throwing 108 pitches through six innings. They like to keep him off the bases. And he puts it down perfectly. Woodson to Ali Sayer. Sacrifice number seven on the year for Terry Mulholland and Mordini at second with two outs, 
Dykstra, one of the hottest hitters on the planet, Lenny Dykstra. Terry, a good job of getting the ball down. That's all it takes, Mardini going. As soon as he sees the ball is down, one play and that's the first base. And here comes Dykstra, another big night. Two for three, two doubles, 29 of them. Two runs scored, 95, and his average in a season high, 305. Tapas have a little conference. We'd like to tell you that uh, announced this afternoon the tickets to the Phillies family autograph party and auction for the benefit of ALS have all been sold out, said David Montgomery, who's the executive vice president for the ball club. The Phillies reached the limit this afternoon as Oliveras and Cormier continue to throw. So for those of you who have your tickets, we'll see you down here next Monday. And if not, there aren't any more around. And there will be a special on that on Switch Channel, I'm told. I think they're still, they're still encouraging people to come out for that live auction, though. Right. You know, so that uh, you can still register for the live auction. Right, come out and bid on some of the great memorabilia, though. And be up for auction. I think it's fantastic that the auction is sold out. I mean, it's an indication of this team being accepted by the fans. In the past at these auctions, there's always been uh, old-time players, uh, players from the other great teams that Phillies have had. And this year, they're doing it up with all the uh, players on the current team. It was not sold out last year, except for a couple of broadcasters who helped to pad that, <laughs> that line up. You and Colby, John Stone, Stone will be there signing autographs. Only going to be working on that special. I was just told. The Sports Channel. Here's the one-one. Breaking ball and Dykstra takes it. Then he got his what, double last time up down the left field line on an 0-2 pitch, which was a fastball that was, if you remember, it was 0-2, but two nice breaking balls that Tewksbury had thrown. And he tried to sneak the fastball by him. I think he'll give up sneaking that fastball by him now and just try and get him out on the breaking ball. One and two on Lenny. But Morandini in second and two out, 6-5 fills, or 5-4 fills. Fly ball center field, he made a good pitch on Dykstra. Brian Jordan is right there. He will put it away, and Gary, we will see you for the day game tomorrow. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. Through six, there you have it. Who's your favorite Philly? Darren Dalton? No. Lenny Dykstra? Terry Mulholland? Uh -huh. Well, who is it? Everyone loves the Phillies, and every kid loves the Fanatic. If you're 6 to 12 years old, you could be the Fanatic's special pal at the August 14th Phillies-Mets game. You'll spend the fifth inning with the big green guy, and you'll get really excellent seats for the rest of the game. Send a postcard with your name, address, telephone number, and age to this address. It's a fantastic, fun-filled contest just for kids from your Fanatic friends at PRISM. All fans receive a great-looking poster, compliments of Thriftway. The teams wear uniforms from 1933. The Phillies play the Pirates on Nostalgia Day, Sunday, August 1st at 1.35. Call 463-1000. Business person special number four. That's against the Expos on Thursday, August the 12th at that familiar starting time of 12.35. Today sponsored by Mellon PSFS. 463-1000 for your tickets. We'll see you out here in the sunshine tomorrow. And then again on August the 12th, Jose Okendo will come out and bat for Tewksbury. There is the switch hitter from Puerto Rico. Okendo, who has been a regular and an extra man for this ball club, is now an extra man once again. 234 overall. One for five as a pinch hitter. And the pitch is over for a strike. Jay Johnstone rejoins us here in the seventh as Lee Guterman starts throwing for the first time tonight. The big lefty. Well, you guys make it exciting while I was gone. It was exciting. That fourth, that uh, third inning was exciting while you were still yes. here. And then the going ahead in the fifth. Okay, no bats for Tewksbury. I guess you could say Mulholland has settled down a tad bit since the first inning. I know we thought maybe it might have been a possible injury or a strain or something bothering him, but. A lot of times we've seen it, Chris. A lot of pitchers have trouble in that first inning finding location, getting their ball to the plate. And that was a little bit low. Two balls and two strikes. So Kendo batting for Tewksbury, the top of the order to Alisea and Smith. 
breaking ball. This is a tough play. Hollins is going to have to bare hand throw on the run. He got it. Good play by Dave Hollins. He really makes that play well and has since he's come into the league. That has never been a problem for him. And you see Mo Holland give him a little slap going by. A lot of people have criticized Holland lately because of his throwing. The problem not only with his thumb, but also maybe his shoulder. And here he makes a fine one had a play a la Mike Schmidt and throws on the run across his body a perfect strike. Nice play. Good play by Hollins because he had a barehanded. That'll bring up Alisea, who is one for one tonight with two walks. He's been a problem for Mulholland. He runs up as if the bunt bugs through it. They have Hollins over playing the line at third, as you see. And Kruk is off the line at first, anticipating Alisea pulling the ball. Now, while Holland would like Dalton to go through the signs again, you saw where Kruk is positioned. Phillies five, Cardinals four, and a nail biter here in the seventh. Second to three. These two teams will be right back at it at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Ali Say has been very patient tonight. Ran a 3 1 count, got a base hit in the first, walked to the second and fifth. And the check swing foul. That one into the camera location, first base side. Made. You think he trapped the ball? I don't think so. We ran it back enough times that it didn't look like it. I, uh, I but caught it was it hard to believe a, that he did. I caught it from a different angle and yeah. just by the angle of his glove. Right. But, you know, it's one of those plays you really don't know. It was one heck of a play. Smith fouls off. Yeah, we, we looked for it too, Jake, but it looked like he caught it. And we did see Eric Gregg run right down the line. He had a good look at it. No argument from their bullpen either from the Cardinals. Ozzie rips it down the left field line. This is extra bases going to the corner. Bounces off the wall, and Thompson will get it back in. And Ozzie Smith has his 15th double of the year, a two-out double. That'll bring up Bernard Gilkey, who is one for two with a walk and a base hit. Smith looks like he tomahawked a high fastball just above the belt. Got right on top. Really got through. Usually, Ozzie pretty much a guy that hits the ball in the alleys or the gaps, as we like to say, but here, really turned on that pitch. As we mentioned, Ozzie Smith in his 16th year, 38 years old, 13 gold gloves. Cardinals for the second straight inning now have a runner to second base with two outs. Phillies are starting to scurry around the bullpen. About to get there, so, uh -oh. Deep to left, it's gone. Bernard Gilkey way out of here, and the Cardinals take the lead. Six to five on a home run by Gilkey as he continues to pad his career high totals. There's no doubt about that one. Mulholland wanted to pitch in, he didn't get it in far enough, and Gilkey, who has swung a hot bat as of late, Led off the game last night with a home run, and watch the location on this pitch. Breaking ball, too much of the inside part of the plate. Gilkey, wait back, really unloads on this one. And a long home run for Gilkey, and the Cardinals jump back out. They led four to nothing, and now they lead six five. Two out double by Ozzie Smith, and the home run by Gilkey. And here is Zeal with a grand slam home run in the first inning. The Cardinals really need this game tonight, and they are battling. And the Phillies are hanging with them. Pretty much a line drive hitting club, Chris. And here are the two homers. That's that is hit. fair. And the fans do not touch it, so it's in play. And Zeal goes to second with a double. So with two outs, all of a sudden trouble. Double, home run, double. 
and a one-run lead for St. Louis, and Witten's a batter. And warming up the Phillies bullpen, a couple of pitchers. Now this game is very close to being turned over to the bullpens. Mo Holland may be gone after this, and Tewksbury already is gone. Another breaking ball, Jay. Right there. Again, the breaking ball not inside. Mulholland usually, when he's sharp and when he's on, that pitch is breaking down and out of the strike zone, or at least inside, underneath the hands, as we see Anderson and David West warming up. And, and those pitches aren't there. They're out over the plate. Yeah, they'd rather Witten bat right-handed, so they'll take their chances and leave Mulholland there, at least for one more hitter. And not bring West the left-hander in. And the pitch is over for a strike. Well, Holland got the first two batters out easily. Well, not easily. Collins made a good play on Okendo, and then Ali Say hit one pretty deep to left center. That might have been a warning sign. He's at pitch 125 right now. The game has been a struggle for Terry Mulholland. He's gotten them into the seventh. There's Gilkey, who's just killing the Phillies. We saw the numbers earlier, what he's done to this club. Takes it high, one and one. The only reason why Holland's still in this game, in my opinion, is because they want Witten about right-handed. And he's decided not to use West to make that happen. Here are the numbers on him. Ground ball to third. Holland's throws him out. He thought about tagging Zeal, but he's stopped in the base pass. So the Cardinals get two runs, three hits, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom of the seventh. They lead it by one. In a game rich with traditions, Sherwin-Williams has created one of its own by preserving and protecting the national shrines of our national pastime. This is the paint of the pros. And it's the choice of millions of fans at home and while your town may not have a big league ballpark in it, it does have a big league paint store. The pros know. Ask Sherwin-Williams. Well, we have a new pitcher for the Cardinals, Lee Guterman on the mound. There are his numbers. Guterman purchased from Louisville on June 30th, brought up. She saw numbers, big, tall, left-handed has played for the Yankees and was with the Mets last year, a little bit 92. This year he was 2-1 with a 2.94 ERA in 25 games in Louisville. Had a couple of saves, picked up his first save the other night when Lee Smith did not come into the game, or actually had left the game because of an injury. So the Cardinals with Lee Guterman on the mound as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Phillies are down by a run, 6-5. And Mariano Duncan will lead it off. It'll be Duncan, Crock, and Hollins to face Guterman, who was in the ball game last night. Every, the Cardinals used everybody out of their bullpen last night, with the exception of Lee Smith. Guterman just pitched a third of an inning, one hit and one walk. He got Darren Dalton to ground out with the bases loaded. So the Phillies find themselves on the short end of the ball game again, six to five. And Duncan takes it over for a strike. The ball is flying out of here tonight on a hot, humid night at the vet. Mariano is one for two with a two-run single and a run score. Foul away. Now the Cardinals are hoping that they can keep it this way and get to the ninth and use their big guy, Lee Smith. Lee Guterman, Jay gave you the stats on him. Big tall guy with the Yankees for a long time, also with a short stint with the Mets. Six foot eight in his ninth year out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. 0 2 pitch on the way, way outside, one and two. He purchased his contract from Louisville on June the 30th. He was two and one with a 2.94 ERA there in 25 games. Duncan fouls it out of play left side. It's a beach ball down there behind the dugout of. There it goes. Where are we? In L.A.? That's <laughs> what you see in Los Angeles at night. So you might be seeing 15 or 20 of them. I expected this crowd to be two into beach balls. Here's the one-two. I expect more people to reach up and try to pop a hole in it. He 
You don't see too many of them here, that's for sure. No. <laughs> These are baseball fans here, two and two to dunk it. And a good at bat for Mariano, who was 0 and 2. And now back to 3 2. And that's what they do in LA. The guards have to come down and take them and then let the air out. No, they keep them out there. <laughs> Base hit, Mariano Duncan. So the plays are coming back out. They'll bring up Clark. Kuderman trying to stay away from Duncan. Watch where the location of this pitch is. It's on the outside part of the plate, breaking right to towards the center. And Duncan does what you're supposed to do with that pitch. It's right back up the middle. And he came back from 0-2 to get the 3-2 and get the base set. Back over for 2 tonight, a deep fly ball, a ground out and a walk. He leads the league in walks. He now has 84 of them. Against Guterman this year, one for one. He got a base hit last night. And he walked with the bases loaded against Guterman in the game in St. Louis earlier this year. On deck is Hollins. Beats it in the hole, a base hit. Duncan is going to test Mark Whitney. He had a pivot and throw, and he's safe. What an arm. And what great base running by Mariano Duncan. They got him at the corners with nobody out. Duncan, he throw. Duncan, he throw, but how about the guy at first base? Can he hit? Another key situation against the left-hander. Breaking ball up in the strike zone. Truck really not a high ball hitter, but he turned on it, and he hit it on the ground through the hole between first and second. A strong throw by Witten, really high, but Duncan just churned it on as he came around second. Boa hustling him all the way with a hit first slide. Truck tried to do that, too. You could tell with a big hole there. He was just trying to pull a ball. Now, Witten has to pivot and still throws a rocket. <laughs> well, he's fun to watch. He can make a third base coach nervous, though. Oh, he can. Reminds me of current guys. Corey Schneider has a good arm like that. Here is Dave Hollins, who is one for two tonight with an RBI. A sacrifice fly, and Dalton's on deck, and nobody's up in the St. Louis bullpen. Good play by Pappas. Cardinals relievers have logged 31 and two-third innings of work as you look at the runners, Duncan and Kruk, in the first eight games of this road trip. Four or more innings in each of the last four games, so that's a weary bunch out there. Sure it is, and that's why they wanted Tewksbury to go at least seven innings tonight so they could give those guys a rest. Here's the pitch to Hollins. Base hit, Dave Hollins, headed towards the gap. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Duncan scores, Kruk being waved around. He's going to score. Dave Hollins at third with a triple. Phillies lead it 7-6, what a game. And I guess some of his critics will say it's okay to play now.
They've got to give Dalton the green light. And Dalton has to look for a pitch that he can drive somewhere. He went towards it, but it was a pitcher's pitch on the outside corner. Good pitch to take three and out. Of course, you're looking for a pitch location. For example, you want the pitch maybe from the middle of the plate in, and if it's not there, you take it. Or you want to dodge. He laughs. Well, that might have been a little low, I guess. Three and two. Well, that's really Guterman's forte is keeping the ball low, moving it in and out of the strike zone. Usually sinking it away from the right-handers, sliders on the outside part of the plate to the left hand. Ball four. He walked him, and here comes Jim Eisenreich. Jim Fergus is going to stay with these left-handed hitters, it would appear, Jake. He has the lead. Uh, and there's Oliveris and Corbier warming up, and here comes Joe Coleman out for a chat. Well, when you've got the lead, Chris, you want, you want the other guy to make the first move. Right. And so, Fergosi, as of this moment, is sitting in the driver's seat. So he's going to let the Cardinals figure out what they want to do, and then he can counter. Well, kids, if you love the Fanatic, Prism wants you to give it a chance to give you the chance to be the Fanatic special power of the August 14th Phil's Mets game. You can spend the fifth inning with the big green guy and watch the rest of the game in some really great seats. If you're 6 to 12 years old, you want to be the Fanatic's pal, just send a postcard to the address on your screen. It's a Fanatic, fantastic Fanatic contest from Prism, the only place to be in the summer. 93, there he is in this scorching summer of 93, both with the heat and by the ball club he loves so much. Eisenreich, the battle. The Cardinals have their infield halfway. It's kind of hard to believe they give up a run on a double play. They come home with a ball hit hard, but that's basically double play down is what they're doing. Well, they're playing double play with the short and second baseman. They went third and first baseman. Yeah, they'll go home if they get it. Right. Eisenreich, a ground ball is short. They'll get one out of this. Back to first. He's out. They got the double play, but they give up the run. So Eisenreich hits into a double play, and the Phillies get another run out of it. Nice turn of the double play by Ali Singh. And the Phillies lead it 8-6. to six. Guterman with a good pitch here. A breaking ball away. Eisenreich tried to go with it. Hit it off the end of the bat. As Chris said, mm. nice double play by the Cardinals. The Cardinals do well in the double plays. Phillies are somewhat lagging. They're about 11th or 12th in the National League in double plays. Thompson, the batter, lost a breaking ball to right field. Here comes Whitten. He squeezes it. The lucky seven for the Phillies produces three runs on three consecutive hits. No errors and nobody left. They lead it by two going to the eighth. What a great game we have going here tonight. Look at this back and forth action. The Cardinals lead four up and Phil's tied. Phil's go ahead. Cardinals go ahead. Phillies go back ahead. We still have two more innings to go. Dalton a big game. Hollins. Mariano Duncan, Todd Zeal got the Cardinals started with that slam, and Bernard Gilkey just put him ahead momentarily. And the Phillies will go with a double change here and bring Kim Batista to play third base after Hollins put him ahead with that triple. And he will bat ninth, and the new pitcher for the Phillies is the right-hander Larry Anderson. But Jim Freak goes, he desperately would like to get an inning out of Anderson, an inning out of Williams. But there's still a long way to go against this tough St. Louis ball club. They know they need to win tonight. This is a big game for St. Louis. Lose this one and then go after a day game tomorrow and try to prevent a sweep and it's tough. You look for them to bite and scratch these last couple innings. You better believe it. Here's the rest of the homestand coming up. One more lap with St. Louis. The business person special tomorrow afternoon. We'll have that for you on Prism. And then the Pirates come in for the weekend, Friday at 7.35, Saturday at 7.05, and Sunday at 1.35 on the Nostalgia Game. Phillies and the Cardinals one more time. We'll see you out here tomorrow for that business person special. Well, I'll be here. <laughs> we'll be on the air at 12.30. Larry Rose will have the pregame at 12. And we expect a huge house out here tomorrow. in Binghamton tomorrow night on Sports Channel. 
game from the Mets double right. What time's that game start? Seven o'clock with Larry Rosen on Sports Channel for people who want to see a doubleheader tomorrow. Brian Jordan will lead it off against Larry Anderson. It'll be Jordan, Pappas, Woodson due to bat, although the, they have a lot of left-handed hitters on the bench to the Cardinals. Brewer, Langford, Perry, and Jeffries still available. We don't know that Jeffries is available as he did not start the game tonight. Jordan takes a strike call. It's one and one. I didn't see him taking batting practice today either. So, yep, so he just might not be. Tryout camp this weekend at Ocean City, New Jersey. Fifth and Bay at 10 o'clock. Jack Pastore, Mage McDonald, Ken Holtzapple, Joe Romano, Rob Holiday at 10 o'clock. Ocean City, New Jersey. Fifth and Bay if you'd like to try out for the Phillies. Fly ball right field. It's shallow. Thompson broke way back and <laughs> here he comes. Look at him laugh to do the same thing we were doing. As he went way back on that one and then had a lot of time to come and get it. He really got pulled on that big swing by Jordan. Well, that's what exactly what it was. It's a big swing and a lot of times outfielders go by the swing. Sometimes they lose the side of the ball and Jordan looked like he tomahawked. That would hit pretty hard, but all he did was sky it. Thompson broke back. Then really had to hustle back in. Eric Pappas, the batter, 0 for 2. Two strikeouts and a walk. The pitchers of record now are Terry Mulholland and Lee Guterman. We're told that Jeffries is not even on the bench, so I guess Greg Jeffries can't go tonight. Gerald Perry has moved out, the bat for Woods. Perry, a left-handed hitter. There he is. The Phillies get a break not having Greg Jeffries play one of the really good hitters in this league. Watch Crook deke 
He might have deked out the umpire Terry Tata. He got a funny hop there, and he had to take that ball close to his body. You know, that's yeah, on the hop. That, if you're wondering why he didn't stretch out like a normal first baseman, that's the reason why on the hop. He had to wait for it and then do it. But also, he was also trying to deek out Pappas into thinking that he could ease up a little bit. Cheryl Perry is the pinch hitter. There he is. You see the numbers he puts up. This guy can really swing the bat. Anderson misses. It's one and one. And Lankford, another dangerous left-handed hitter, moves out the bat for Guterman. And Joe Torre running, rolling his aces in this inning. Perry, 32 years old, in his ninth year in the big leagues. Last year, hit 238 with the Cardinals in 87, 240 in 91 in 109 games. Three and one. I knew they wouldn't go quietly. The Cardinals are too good a team. Strike to the Perry. High in the air, first base side and out of play. Oh, he jump at that one. Yes, he did. I don't know if you know this, Chris, but Perry's had some cardinal blood in him for a long time. Even though he played a lot of years with Atlanta and one with Kansas City, he's the nephew of former Cardinal Dan Greason. Remember Danny Greason with Cincinnati and the Cardinals? Good left-hand hitter. Was well, he ever? Carroll's getting a little gray in that beard. <laughs> he's been around a while. He had a good career with Atlanta. Sometime first baseman. Always been able to hit. See if the runner Pappas goes. He does. Swing and a foul. Well, Dalton knows he has a heck of a chance to get a strikeout double play here. So when the catcher will ask the umpire to give him a quick call. on in the infield hit returns to first base. Lankford on deck, a left-handed batter. And there's your situation. The runner goes. And it's outside. Ball four. He walked in. And Lankford comes up, see if he goes to West. An infield hit and a walk, and the Cardinals have two on for Ray Langford, who will come out and bat for Guterman. And here comes Fergosi, as we figured. I think why Fergosi waited so long, they wanted to make sure that West was ready. They also had to wait till Ray Langford was announced. Well, Larry Anderson will leave after one third of an inning. David West on his way out of the bullpen, and we'll be back with this exciting game after this. Here's David West, who leads the club in appearances with 45, coming into game number 46. He was in the game last night. An inning and a third, a hit, two runs, one of them earned, two walks, and one strikeout. That's a lot of strikeouts. As you see, there are 59 of them in 59 innings pitched. And the guy he's facing, Ray Langford, he has faced twice this year, one time last night, and he has walked in both times he's faced him. I guess you could say that one of the major problems West has had is that sometimes his ball has so much movement on he can't control it in the strike zone, and that's why you see the 31 walks, the 59 innings. West, a good slider, breaks down and in. He also has a running fastball. Well, immediately following tonight's baseball game, Michael Corleone attempts to make his family business legitimate in the face of new threats to his rule in the Godfather Part 2, Al Pacino. Robert De Niro star in the second part of an epic saga tonight on Prism, the only place to be in the summer of 93. There's Larry Anderson. He gave up the infield hit and then walked Gerald Perry. 
And that brings his good buddy David West into the game to pitch to Langford with Ali Saya on deck and Ozzie Smith due to follow. And the numbers on Ray Langford. And West's first pitch is a strike. Langford taking all the way for his past history against West. Langford is a pinch hitter, is 0 for 3. Pappas at second, Perry at first, and now West and Dalton having a little trouble getting together on the pitches. There you see the base runners. Phillies in the outfield will bunch Langford with the right and center fifth right and left fielder. And Dykstra will play Langford maybe a shade with a step or two towards right field. One ball and one strike on Langford. Boy, he painted that corner then. One and two. Three straight fastballs. Would you throw him a breaking ball here? Yes. You see Langford with runners in scoring position. See what they decide to do. There it is. And he got it looking. What a breaking ball that was. Frankford thought it was outside or else he's saying, what am I going to do with that thing? No, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. Watch the big break on the curve ball by West. Look, he starts it up at the elbow and it breaks down below the knees, right down over the center of the plate. And that's one of those I gotta give the pitcher credit for that one. There's not a whole lot of hitter can do with that pitch. Fastball, 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 breaking ball, got him. And here's Ali Saya, the switch hitter, who is one for two tonight, all off Terry Mulholland, the starter. I asked me if I'd be looking for that breaking ball. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. One ball, no strikes on Ali Saya. Pretty good pitch, one hole didn't it? It's close. Might have been a little low. That looked about the same. <laughs> one and one. I don't know, Dalton had a funny way of catching that ball. I don't know if he, uh, he looked like he was moving out and he caught it with his glove. Home plate down. The old pancake, huh? I guess. Breaking ball looped up there. Too high, two and one. All I say is you see him off the end of the bat. He's just trying to put the ball in play right now. He's not a long ball hitter. Although, as I mentioned, he has his one home run this year off David West, and it's a three-run homer. That's not a black cat statement because it already happened once. Fly ball foul out of play. Can't do it again. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, <laughs> you heard him say that, folks, and they can't do it again, okay? Well, I feel much... Can't worry. Well, rest sure. Can't worry about saying those things once in a while. Okay. I hope. <laughs> there you see him off the end of the bat. Luis Alisea. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Missed inside with a fastball. 3-2. Now the runners get the jump, and it's a two-run game. And Ozzy Smith's on deck. Pappas and Perry are the base runners. is up even a little more now on that bat handle. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to third. Baptiste is going to have a long throw to first, and he got it. They put him in for defense in that inning, and Kim makes a good play down the line where they had a position. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two men left. To the bottom of the eighth, eight six. Darren Dalton, Madonna, Lenny Dykstra, Gina Davis, John Crutt, Rosie O'Donnell. Jim Fragosi, Tom Hanks, the Phillies, and the Peaches, the hottest teams in baseball, two teams in a league of their own, and only one channel's got them both, Prism. Whether it's at the bat or on the silver screen, it's the most exciting baseball action of the summer. From your baseball crazy friends at Prism, the only place to be for the summer of 93. Kim Batiste over near the line against Ali Saya, the ball was not hit that hard. It was hit pretty weakly. And he goes over and gets it, and that makes his throw to first. And he had come in for defense in that inning. Makes a good play to have the inning, and Kimball back second in the eighth. 
to Dave Hollins gave the Phillies the lead with that triple to right center. Here's Gerald Perry. He'll stay in the game, play first base and bat eighth. And the new pitcher, this is the left-hander, Real Cormier. You saw him last night, French-Canadian. Started the season as a starting pitcher and now has been in the bullpen for a while. As a starter, he was 4-5 with a 4.54 earned run average in 13 games started. Well, once again, we'd like to remind you about Dream Week. Since this is Dream Week reunion night, all the guys who were at Dream Week last year were here tonight, got their baseball cards and their videotapes were down on the field for introductions. That could be you next year. Just call 938-1200. Week number one's filled up. We still have some room in week number two, but that's filling up rapidly. 2938-1200. Make that call right away, and we'll see you next year in the wintertime in Clearwater, Florida. Mickey Moore and Dini, Ken Baptiste, Lenny Dykstra. And warming up the Phillies bullpen, no surprise, Mitch Williams. As David West did a great job coming in and getting the strikeout on Langford and then the ground out on Alisea. Moore and Dini faces Cormier, and it's a strike call. Here is Mitch Williams getting ready his own way. Mordini tonight, one for three. Had a base hit off Bob Chicksbury in the sixth inning. Alisea, the second baseman, play one out. Gerald Perry, the new first baseman. At least Mordini starting to hit the ball back on the ground again. I know he had some problems there hitting everything in the air. Really struggled with that early last year. Jim Fergosi did a smink. He got him out of that. He started hitting the ball back on the ground. Got his average up to 272 at the end of the year. So maybe that's a good sign for Mordini hitting the ball back on the ground. Kim Batiste, the batter, batting in the nine hole. And then to the top of the order, Lenny Dykstra. The Phillies pitcher right now is batting four in Dave Holland's spot. That pitcher at the moment is David West. It will be Mitch Williams in the ninth. One ball and one strike on, strike on Kim Batiste. Bottom of the eighth. Phillies lead it eight to six. This has been a seesaw battle all night. Matisse fouls a changeup off the end of the bat, kicks into the crowd. Cormier came into the game last night behind McGrain and pitched two innings, four hits, two earned runs, and two strikeouts charged to the left-hander from New Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Broken bat, ground ball to second base, and Ali Say another play, two outs. We look at the job that Ali Say has done since he's taken over second base. It really helps solidify the infield for the Cardinals. With Smith, the fixture at short. Ali Say playing because every day because Payne has been out. And then Harry Geronimo Payne, a good player. And Lenny Dykstra, two for four for Lenny tonight. Two runs scored, a couple of doubles. And a season high 304 for him. He got with the 305 his last at bat. Cormier is 26 years of age. Number six pick for the Cardinals, June of 88. Dykstra off the end of the bat and a base hit. Cormier goes away from him and Lenny Dykstra just slings it in the left field and he has his third hit of the ball game. I kind of like the way that we play tennis, huh? 30 low, look at this. Outside pitch, just maybe on the corner, maybe going out of the strike zone. Just a little, little soft serve in the left field. You know what? Tomorrow looks like a line drive in the square book. I'd take a hundred of those a year. Duckett's had a good ball game. He came into the game as a very hot hitter. And he's continued it tonight. Mariano two for three with a couple of runs batted in and two runs scored. Cormier with a little step-off move. That base hit by Dykstra got him to 3-0-6. Now this situation, what do you think? Lenny gets a jump go? I think so, you got a lead? Yeah, well, you, exactly. I mean, he's out stolen 18 in a row. You just leave him on his own there and see if he can read Cormier. Cormier. He's seen him enough. Oh, he was 
was thinking about it then, and Cormier moved over. Cormier's got that snap, though, similar to Mahala, not quite as quick, but it will make you uh, shorten up a stride or two. As you said, Lenny with 18 straight steals, and he does get a jump, he's got to try for it. Cormier just holds the ball and throws over. That's another great way to hold a guy who I think Mike run is just hold it. Right. Looking on, knowing his team has one more shot and wants to keep the Phillies off the board this inning. Duncan wanted time, he didn't get it, so the pitch counted. He just stands there and looks at Wally Bell. He wants to know, why didn't you give me time? Sure, you have a good swing if you foul it off fine. The same thing, three and one. 
The worst thing you could do when you're ahead of the count is get jammed or pop it up. You've got to have good swings at it, even though if the ball may be a little bit out of the strike zone. You see the runners, they'll be off on the pitch. There they go. And it's ball four. And after the 3 1 pitch, that was really a little bit out of the strike zone. And Crux swung at it. Cormier thought he'd try and go maybe away with it, maybe an inch or two off the plate. And Crux took it. Ricky Jordan will come out the bat. Wally Bell puts him in the ball game, and here comes Tory. And he'll come and get Rick Omar Olivares. And as Tory strolls to the mound, we're going to pause for another message. the new pitcher for the Cardinals, Omar Oliveris. There are his numbers in 34 games. He's pitched 76 innings, walked 36, struck out 39, had a save, picked up his third win the other day on Sunday. This is his 28th appearance out of the bullpen. Oliveris is the new right-hander for the Cardinals, Ricky Jordan will be the batter for the Phillies. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Phillies lead it by two, eight to six. They have runners at first and second. Crook at first, Duncan at second, and Lenny Dykstra at third. So Jordan with bases loaded, two outs, hitting 338 with four homers and 35 RBIs against the Cardinals in his career. will try and put the Phillies up by another couple of runs. And he has good lifetime numbers against Omar Olivares, does Ricky Jordan. Six for 12. It's 500 any way you look at it. Bases loaded, as Jay said, two outs. And Jordan trying to make it a little more comfortable in the ninth. The Phillies lead it by two with a chance for more with two outs. Ground ball headed towards the hole. Great play, Ozzie Smith, but they'll get one run out of it. Ricky Jordan broke his bat. Ozzie Smith saved one run, but the Phillies pick up another, and it's 9-6. To give Ricky Jordan an RBI, and he's now 7 for 13 lifetime off Oliveras. Well, the first pitch swinging, Jordan goes after running fastball inside. Looked like he broke his bat, but Ozzie Smith, the wizard, saved the Cardinals from further damage by keeping the ball on the infield. The Phillies pick up another run. A chance to do some more damage here with Darren Dalton. They got him loaded for Dalton. Here's the pitch to Darren. Low ball one. Darren, lifetime off Oliveras. He's four for 17, 235 with a homer and three runs batted in. He's one for two tonight with a two run triple. Deep to left center field. Way back. This ball is a grand slam. Home run, Darren Dalton. Darren Dalton with a grand slam, and the Phillies lead it 13 to 6, and now it's going to be easy. And with that home run, by the way, home run number 100 on the year for the Phillies, Gento. Gento donates another $200 to the Philadelphia Child Guidance Clinic. 20 grand Gento has already donated this year as Dalton. in the ninth and they get an eighth and they get a five run inning. And all Chris with two out. And nobody on base. Is that amazing? Well, Phillies are getting hot again. Will that drive a pitching coach and a manager to drink? I told you it's been an emotional ring and night here at the bat and these people are drained. I know we are. Here's the next pitch to Eisenreich, and he rips a foul. There's a lot of people leaving. I think they just figure, I can't take this any longer. <laughs> we might as well go listen on the way home. I think it's over. No, the people leave. That's Dalton's second grand slam of the season. He hit the other one off Bob Walker. They sit Eisenreich, and the hits just keep on coming. 
in a game the Phillies trailed four to nothing tonight with nobody out. They now lead 13 to six. Well, Joe Torre and Joe Coleman mentioned to me earlier today that they really didn't want to get too much of the bullpen. As they said, you mentioned the numbers that they both inning twice in the last few games as we see Dalton right there. Their arms are tired. He wanted Tewksbury to go on seven innings, hopefully get out with the lead, and then finally get to Lee Smith. Hasn't worked out that way. Thompson takes a strike call. The Phillies have now hit six grand slams this year. And of course, if you're Jim Fergosi and you watch the grand slam by Todd Zeal in the first inning, after the first three batters reach base, to have some thoughts too about your bullpen. Ooh, that was close. That was career grand slam number five for Darren Dalton. Two this year as we mentioned and six RBIs in a game is a career high for Dalton. He has a grand slam and a two-run triple. The RBIs have been coming slowly for him lately, but he exploded here tonight. Thompson off the end of the bat. Actually got jammed. He rolls it down the line. That kicks off. Eisenreich's being waved around. Here comes Gilkey's throw to the plate. He's safe. The Phillies have their 14th run of the game. Larry Ball, the third base coach, Chris, is right on that play. And the Phillies have batted around here in the eighth inning. As you mentioned, Thompson really getting jammed. Oliveris just lifted his head up to the sky as if to say, I can't believe this. The left fielder Gilkey had to hurry in, and Boa had Eisenreich running all the way, didn't even have to slide. Heads up base running by Eisenreich and third base coach Larry Boa. Thompson's first hit of the game is his 11th double, and here is Warren Deedy, who started this out by grounding out the second on Cormier. Batiste then grounded out, and then all Haiti broke loose for the Cardinals. <laughs> Six runs in the inning for the Phillies. This will loosen a lot of people up in town. This looks like the team was around here early this year. This game is a tremendous long haul from beginning to end, and it is hills and valleys like no other sport. I want to see a few people come out here with brooms tomorrow. Two outs in the inning. He's not happy about that, but he's happy about what's happened to the Phillies. The Phillies have a monster in it. Six big runs. Six hits, no errors, and one man left on base, and that guy, the big hit in the inning, a grand slam for Darren Dahl. We head to the ninth, 14-6 Phillies. Cubs beat San Diego at home today, 8-6. To Dodgers 2-1 to over the Giants. They're 6-9 game against San Francisco. Montreal leads Pittsburgh in the 8th. New York over Florida late. Houston in the 7th over Cincinnati. And Colorado leading Atlanta. Atlanta might have a chance to pick up another one there. In the American League in that New York-Detroit game, the big story in a losing cost, Travis Fryman. 5-for-5 five five with four RBIs and hit for the cycle. Cleveland and Chicago, Robin Ventura, Grand Slam, his 17th of the year. Harold Baines out of solo homer, two-run double for Baltimore, and they're in the eighth in that game. 2-2 Boston and Milwaukee, Texas and Kansas City in the sixth. Minnesota, Seattle just getting underway as all eyes look towards that. See if Ken Griffey Jr. can tie a major league record with eight straight, homering in eight straight games. And Oakland at California, and here is what Darren Dalton's salami sounded like to Omar Oliveras. Swipe. You don't have to tell you much. Well, you can tell by the swing. We heard the crack of the bat from here, Chris. You knew as soon as they hit it where it was going. You just didn't know how far. It had a chance the minute he hit it. Even to the opposite field, the way the ball's carried here tonight. Mitch Williams will come in in a non-save situation. And this game.
Yankees got it a lot easier with that six-run ninth. Eight. Ozzie takes a strike. David West really doing a terrific job by getting Langford and Ali Sayer to end the eighth. And then the Phillies coming back with their big inning. Put themselves way up now, 14 to six, after trailing four to nothing in the first inning. So time is called. Something came flying out near Kim Batiste. Looks like a midget hula hoop. So Batiste sails it down towards home plate. And one of the back boys picks it up. One and one on Smith. Smith guilty zeal due to bat. And the Cardinals have to be thinking right now, boy, did we come into a hornet's nest? Well, they need a long pass for six and then have to go for the for the two-point conversion to tie. And the Phillies in their wildest dreams are not thinking sweep when the series starts. The Cardinals are thinking they would like to sweep it. Realistically, St. Louis says we'd like to win two out of three, and the Phillies say we'll be happy with two out of three. This is a tough game for Mitch Waves to pitch in. Relievers. A lot of times, closers come into these kind of games and there's no adrenaline. But they don't want to use Anderson and West, or West any more than they have to. And they hit for him anyway, so he's out of the game. He pitched two innings last night, and he's uh, two-thirds tonight, and he's going to use a guy so many times. Actually, Chris, I think that the Philly players coming into this series were a little bit mad about what's been going on lately. I mean, they go on the road trip, they have a tough time. They come back. They're four games in first place as this one's fouled out of play. And yet all the people here, there's nothing but negativism. I mean, if you would have told the people at the beginning of spring training that after coming back, after the All-Star break and the, and the West last West Coast trip, that the Phillies would be in first place by four games, you would think that people around this town would be ecstatic. But no, they constantly <laughs> criticize. And I think the Philly players were a little sensitive to that. They wanted to come out and show them that, no, that they're not... Uh, they're, they had their lumps. They can't play 700 ball, and they're doing it on the field. And they're going to get some more lumps before it's over. By the way, well, you have to, having grown up here, yeah. I understand what goes on here. People here are naturally nervous and are waiting for things to go wrong, Joe. You have to understand this. This is just our makeup in this area. Is that what it is? That's why I said a little while ago this will loosen things up for a few days here. It's just, it's just the way we are here. And they're, they're great fans. They're just, they get nervous quick. <laughs> Hazi swings and misses at a breaking ball. Well, I guess I can relate a little to that as we watch the slider by Williams after he got behind on three and one. Look at this slider down and in out of the strike zone. You don't see that too often. Ozzie Smith has probably struck out more in these past two games than he has in the last 50. In months. He struck right. out four times in these two games. Well, that was a little different at bat Ozzie just had than if it had been a one or two run game, too. That's true. Gilkey, the batter. Bernard hit a big two run home run for the Cardinals in the seventh to put them ahead 6 5. And that's the last runs they scored. Duncan throws out Gilkey, and there are two down here in the ninth. The Phillies one out away from winning two in a row from St. Louis and taking their lead up to six. And yeah, that's one thing that dog the Phillies on the road trip, Chris, is the fact that their defense was a little erratic, but here, in these two games, we seem to find defensive plays all around the field on the Philly side. Zeal comes up smiling. He just said something to Dalton. They're probably comparing salamis. First, the grand slam in the first inning by Zeal, and the grand slam by Dalton in the eighth. Zeal gets a base hit with two outs. Todd Zeal continues his fine inning. That's three hits for him. He's turning into a good young prospect, didn't he? Just, just 27 years old, starting to reach baseball maturity. They say when you get to 27, you really start to, to develop your skills, and he's right at that age now. They were really down on him early in the year, too. Being told that the Phillies have not struck out tonight for the first time since August of 91. 
Witten the batter, and he takes it inside. and one. The Phillies now with 24 runs and 35 hits in these two games against St. Louis. With the business person special coming up tomorrow. How about that? Anthony Young won a game. That's nice. No. There it is. That's that's nice to see that young man. He's been through a real oh. hell on earth. I will guess so. In two years, you've lost 27 in a row. Oh, that's, that's terrific. Boy, that's got to lift a gigantic monumental load off his shoulder. And he won it as a relief pitcher. Three and one now on Witten. Nice that he doesn't represent the time run. See, Williams is trying to get this over with. Mentioned this is not his favorite kind of game to pitch in. To get a little work, or could he have brought in someone else down there for this one inning and, and save Mitch for tomorrow? Well, Mitch wanted to uh, pitch in all three games in this series. He well, said that, and he was ready to go. And I guess for Goose, he just figured, hey, I used Mike Williams last night. This is not a spot I'm normally going to use a day late on. Uh, I don't want to use Mason after two innings last night. So yeah, let's go. And you know he's going to throw 30, 40 pitches probably. <laughs> it's a big deal for him. Maybe he said he was ready to go. He was warmed up. He wants to pitch in all three games. Brian Jordan over four tonight playing in center field. Jordan didn't like that. He gives Wally Bell a look. Brian Jordan who gave up an NFL career as a defensive back with the Atlanta Hawkins this time contract with the Cardinals and he's turning a pretty good baseball player much like his old teammate Deion Sanders. Deion's been red hot lately for the Braves. Williams is trying to get everybody to the post game spread. <laughs> and it's one and one. Fouled away, one and two. The crowd would like to get to this last strike so some of them could stand up and start cheering. Here they go. Zeal at second. Whitten at first. A lot of people on their feet as we get to just about the three-hour mark of this terrific game here tonight. This one's really been fun. It's fun if you're a Philly fan. What an offensive performance. And the Cardinals have to figure, geez, we really gave this a pretty good run tonight. Here we go. Foul away. Drag him out. <laughs> well, two or two. Just wants the people to stand a little bit more on their feet to stretch out for those muscles loosen up on the way walking back to their car. Popped him up and this will do it. Who wants it? Former breaking ball. Mariano Duncan squeezes in the Phillies win big tonight, 14 to 6. And that's a happy group that the skipper will go out and greet. Looking a lot smarter with all these runs, too. <laughs> There's Dalton, who really made him look smart tonight. Real smart. Darren Dalton was six runs batted in tonight as John Vukovic has a word with him. Final of the game, 14 to 6. And we'll be back right after this.